from White Heavyweight Championship, Mike Richmond versus Isaac Doolittle. You can see here, Sean, a two-way height advantage for Isaac Doolittle. However, inch and a half inch reach advantage for Mike Richmond. Probably not going to mean much in this fight. We've talked about this extensively. Whoever can implement their game plan is going to win this fight. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now set for the main event. Scheduled for five two-minute rounds for the interim BKFC World Light Heavyweight Championship. Presented to you by OnlyFans. Sanctioned by the Colorado State Boxing Commission. Chairman Ryan Frazier. Executive Director Tony Cummings. The three judges scoring our championship main event. Oscar Martinez, Dean Abeta, and Mark Sanchez. And the third man inside the squared circle, our referee in charge of the action at the bell, Big Dan Mergliata. And now, with our bare knuckle fans watching live worldwide on the BKFC app for the first time in Colorado State history. From the sold out First Bank Center, fight fans of Denver. It's time to Introducing you first, fighting out of the red corner. Tonight, he wears black. He stands 5 feet 10 inches tall. His official weight, 182.9 pounds. He is undefeated as a bare knuckle fighter at 4-0. Fighting out of Hope, Kansas. Here is Isaac, the Honey Badger. the ring his opponent fighting out of the blue corner tonight he wears tiger print he stands five feet nine inches tall his official weight 184 pounds even he is also undefeated at three and oh fighting out of rosemount minnesota here is mike the marine Richman. I said I have to take away time and space from Mike Richmond. I have to continually disrupt his balance. Dan Mergliata set the call. Both fighters up to scratch. The winner becomes the BKFC interim light heavyweight champion. Sporting touch of hands. Round number one. Tiger print trunks for Mike Richmond. Black trunks for Isaac Doolittle. Head movement immediately from Doolittle. Counts on the outside from Richmond. Doolittle on the duck under. Looking for the entry. Duck under again. Now be careful ducking under like that with quick hands like Mike Richmond. He will turn those under. He will up again. Richmond on the exhale from the outside. Call southpaw stance. Can you see the level change from Doolittle? On the roll under once more. Good head movement from Doolittle, but you have to come back up there and punch us. A little right to the body, and that's blocked by Richmond. Richmond now coming forward into the clinch. Left hand on the exit from Doolittle. One tail remaining on the water ball in the back. Snap jab from Richmond. Richmond resetting in the center circle. You literally see the continual upper body movement, the continual shoulder rolls and level changes. Just like that on cue. Jeff from Doolittle, can fully land. And on the walk down pressure again. 40 seconds remaining for round one. Doolittle Chris again, dipping his head on the overhand right. Doing a good job of being unpredictable right now. He's taking Mike Richmond there and trying to figure out exactly what his opponent's doing and what it's going to be. 
Double flip jab and the left hook from Richmond. A little swing wide, looking for the entry into the pocket. There's a bad left hand last from Richmond. Taking a forward step. Heavy front shoulder from Richmond again, circling out. That is the end of round one. We're able to do what they wanted up. right there. I think right now, Blue just wants to continue this fight, make sure it keeps going a little bit later in the round. Very nice little sneaky one, two thrown by Mike Richmond right there. My bad. I feel like right now, Richmond is just really downloading a lot of information right there. How about it? Is that a hit? It's the power. Solid. All right. You got this. Thank you, come in. Let that stop. Thank you. Is it above the eye? All right, so he's uh, doing good. Really like stay to get left. He's able to get in and move the pull around, grind on him at all. I think he just wants to make the fight go a little bit longer to see if he can continue with that pace because we've never seen him go past the second round, sir. Richmond's sixth ever bare knuckle bout. The jab to the inside. Jab right back from Doolittle. Doolittle again on the duck under. Right in on the entry counter right hand from Isaac Doolittle. Doolittle coming forward. A little to the body, to the inside. A little snatching on the overhook, the right hand. Richmond now taking a backward step. Good job. 
To be honest, I think it's been saved with Isaac Dillon. has been his very good head movement right now. Avoid those huge shots. Just saw the big exhale again from Mike Richmond as he entered the pocket. Left hook, right hand from Richmond. That was such the count of 10 at 1 minute 35 seconds into round number three for your winner by K.O. and new interim BKFC World Light Heavyweight Champion Mike the Marine Richmond. Welcome to the new BKFC app. Get monthly BKFC events for $7.99. People that are missing it are missing out big time. Enjoy our all new library of content, including behind the scenes access, exclusive BKFC original series, and additional live bare knuckle fights from around the globe. Knuckle up with the new BKFC app, only $7.99 per month. The world's most exciting combat sport, Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship, is back April 12th. It's BKFC Fight Night, Clearwater. In the main event, the formerly retired Mike the Marine Richmond returns and eyes his destiny. But destiny saboteur Eric L. Travisio Lozano has other intentions. In the co-main event, former world champion Elvin L. Bandito Brito toes the line with Jafar Fort Knox. Watch the adrenaline-fueled action live. Download the BKFC app at BKFC.com. 
for Mike Jones versus Eric Lozano. And you can see here, Sean, a couple things jump out. There is a slight height advantage for Mike Jones, but it is a significant five-inch reach advantage. He knows Lozano has great power. Jones can't let him get there, but you also have Lozano did miss weight by about a pound and a half. Was that because he didn't get a good camp or he just had a tough cut? We shall find out. Hello, hello. scheduled for five two-minute rounds in the light heavyweight division presented to you by Bucked Up Energy Drink. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the red corner. Tonight he wears the proud colors of the United States of America and Mexico. He stands five feet, 10 inches tall. His official weight, 187.4 pounds. Tonight, he steps into the squared circle ready for bare knuckle fight number four. Fighting out of Ed Couch, Elsa Texas. Here is Eric El Travieso Lozano. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight, he wears black. He stands six feet, two inches tall. His official weight, 185.6 pounds. He is an MMA veteran of 17 fights and tonight makes his BKFC debut. Fighting out of Salt Lake City, Utah, by way of Price, Utah. Here is Mike. in charge of the action, Tyler Tomlinson. Eric Lozano told us, I feel that Mike Jones has a hybrid MMA slash kickboxing striking style. I think Lozano said of Jones, he's going to struggle without the ability to throw kicks to set up his punches. The KFC debut for referee Tyler Tomlinson. Check of the judges. Now calling both fighters up to scratch. Knuckle up. Round number one. Black trunks for Mike Jones. U.S. and Mexican flag trunks for Eric Lozano. Jones, immediately as he said he wanted to do, stay on the outside, try to establish long straight punches. To the inside on the overhand right comes Lozano. Back to the center circle, stiff jab. 1-1-2 one, one, then from Jones. Jones back to the jab. Mike Jones doing a great job of doing just what he did, staying right at the end of his punches, just outside of Lozano. Lozano trying to wade forward into the mid-range, staying heavy with the jab. There's that hook jab from Jones. Stiff left hand over and right chest misses from Jones. It was a nasty punch by Jones right there. Lozano with the head movement, ducking his head, just missing with the overhand right. Lozano definitely the type of fighter who's willing to take shots to establish his own game and his own range. Just like that on cue on the overhand right from Lozano. Good defense, good awareness from Jones. Jones on the left hand. One minute remaining, round number one. Jones, long straight punches to this point in the fight. One, two to the body, not fully there for Lozano, but it backed Jones off his striking line. Jones on the overhand right, right hand again. Big uppercut, peace out. Down goes Mike Jones, who has a slip immediately by referee Tyler Tomlinson. Now addressing the fallen mouthpiece of Eric Lozano. That was just a push off right there, Sean. Good refereeing all the way around for Tyler Tomlinson. Big overhand right from Eric Lozano. Lozano to the inside. More big swings, overhand left and right, stiff left hand, stiff jab from Jones. And I feel like it's that long jab of Jones that's making his opponent throw these overhands right. Lozano's really struggling to find the range. Lozano dipping his head to the inside, takes that uppercut. Big swing still from range for Mike Jones. Ten second clack, final 
final seconds, round number one. Overhand right, that didn't get through from Lozano. Lozano into the pocket. Lozano the jab, there is the bell. That is the end of the opening round. I'm trying to feel like the tale of what's going on in that first round was the range of Mike Jones. He's keeping it very well. He's landing those jobs. He's leaning away so much. He's making it hard for Lozano to get inside. He's telegraphing these overhand rights. If he does that, it's not going to work. you got to stop leaning away. Take this water. You hear me? Yep. You're hurting him with everything you throw, but you're giving him a chance when you lean away from that. Lean forward and look for that clinch. Sean, lean forward and hit a legend. Will Jeremy you Horn in the corner of Mike Jones. This guy's been country. fighting so Working long, that, had right? so many fights. Just such a great, great mentor to have out there. I would say Jeremy Horn, one of the true underrated greatest of all time in MMA. Absolutely. Definitely a pioneer. Fought every weekend sometimes. He'd get in the car, drive from one place to the next, just all over the place. Such a high skill level. Unbelievable fighter. I commentated Jeremy Horn in Bellator in 2010. He said, are you excited about 100 fights? He said, I had that years ago. <laughs> Tapology just missed out, so did Sure Dog. Round number two. Jones heavy on the feint. There's the feint right back from Lozano. Those fingers, Mike. Tyler Tomlinson telling Mike Jones, don't extend your fingers towards the eyes. Your opponent, Eric Lozano. And I like it when Mike throwing with that jab right there, keeping his opponent away from him. To the inside comes Lozano. Rear right up and got overhand right from Jones. Then the left hand. Big right hand. I went to the clinch. Right hand on the counter with his back against Rose for Lozano. Lozano on the left hand. Counter one, two from Jones into the clinch. Break, 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 break. break from Tomlinson, 110 remaining, round number two of this light heavyweight bout. Stocking pressure from Jones, now mirroring the hips of Eric Lozano, who's on his back foot. Great job for Jones right there, staying right in his range. Every time Lozano steps forward, Jones knows it's coming. A hook jab, then the right hand, neither punch landing for Lozano. Lozano cut outside of his left eye, you see the smear of blood across the left side of his face. To the body from Jones, another jab, just misses with his shovel right hand. Jones has got to be careful. He cannot get tired in this fight and just start trading punches. Lozano coming back to the inside. And Lozano said he wanted a rough, rugged fight. He felt Jones would try to make this a technical outside fight. To the inside, half time club now snatched by Lozano, doing good work with the uppercuts. Heavy on the head goes Mike Jones. Quick separation from Tyler Tomlinson. Right hand on the entry, then the left hand. Good signals of Lozano, and that drops Mike Jones. Wow. Definitely against the flow of this fight right there, Sean. Up at eight. What's the sign? Final seconds, round number two. Right hand, there is the bell. And that right there to me, it just looked like Jones got tired there the last 30 seconds, 40 seconds. He can start trading punches with his opponent. He can't do that. He's got to utilize that range. You can tell Lozano's tired, too. Yep. He's just been out here. Plants, He's done man. this before. People well, don't understand this. It's a different right style of fighting. Indian. So Mike Jones me. has got to get down, down that round. deep, suck it You're up, the point now. continue to win this round to get a draw. Stay long. Okay. When his opponent you comes in, be heavy on him. All right? You got to let's see what happened here. Smart. Little He's punch tired. sneaks through hey, inside the, and right behind well, back of the head right punch. there. Like I said, I almost feel sharp like punches keep that jab Mike sharp. Jones is jab getting a little tired forward. out there. People don't Close understand the distance, how different this hit. is in right. MMA or boxing. Yep. Don't pull away and give him that big right hand. Here you go, here you go. Against the flow of this fight, Eric Lozano records the knockdown of Mike Jones in round number two. It was looking like a 10-9 round for Jones, presumably then a 10-8 round for Lozano in round two. Medical timeout, the assessment of the left eye. We're good, We're good to go? Okay. We're good to go. Come on. Medical clearance. Both fighters brought up the scraps for round number three. Knuckle up. Tight striking guard for Jones split immediately by the jab of Lozano. Jones has got to be careful. He did not move very much in that punch. He can't trade punches with Lozano. Strong jab in the right hand from Jones right back. Lozano overhand right. Lozano literally running into the pocket over the net. Big shots from the halftime club. Doing the miss on the duck under 
to the body. Now goes Eric Lozano. Nope, nope, back up. Lozano too Unlock. heavy Don't on the end of Jones. That's the separation from Tomlinson. Very similar in total strikes, punches, thrown, and landed. Step in right hand again for Lozano. And there's that power right there from Lozano. Jones is hurt bad. I don't think he's getting up, Sean. And Lozano welcomes his opponent to beat KFC. The rough style right there. You come in there against me, I'm going to land these hard shots. Lozano was right there. It felt like he was going to take his opponent out in the first couple rounds. Did a great job there. Again, Eric Lozano is a veteran of 37 pro MMA fights. But Lozano said, with all of that pro MMA experience, he believes that bare knuckle fighting is a much rougher sport. Let's he go, felt baby. coming in with three hey, no, BKFC bouts to none for Mike Jones, that would be a huge advantage. It was those punches. See, Mike Jones tried to block like you do in boxing or MMA. He put his hands up right there. You cannot block like that. These punches get through. Watch, right? Mike put his hands up. Look where that punch landed, right behind the ear right there. This isn't boxing. That would have been a great block in boxing. Not boxing with no gloves. You can't box the same way. You can't fight the same way. You have to use head movement. Perry, can't get, have to get out of the way. Mike Jones has learned a very valuable lesson right there. Eric Lozano showed incredible patience, poise. Waited for Mike Jones to step into his range. Jones turned up the pressure as he was doing exceedingly well from the outside. As this became an inside fight, Eric Lozano took over, knocking down Jones, latter stages of round two, and then finishing Mike Jones in round number three. Well, when Mike Jones was able to stay outside, stay at the end of his range, he looked fantastic. The problem is, this is a different sport. You get tired much quicker than you think. You think this is easy. Two minutes, I can do anything. No, you can't. Pushing, pulling, keeping tense muscles the entire time. It's a different animal, and people learn it that right now. Again, Eric Lozano in our fighter meeting said, I want to be ultra aggressive. I want to make this a rough and rugged fight. Check, check, and check. <laughs> Here is Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, our referee in charge, Tyler Tomlinson, reaches the count of 10 at 51 seconds into round number three. For your winner, by KO, Eric El Travieso Lozano. And Lozano just keeps getting better, showcasing that chin. But one other thing, he showcases that power. If he lands a shot, he's hurting you. That is a quality win for Eric Lozano against a quality pro MMA fighter, Mike Jones, who in this bout made his BKFC debut. Jones was doing exceedingly well, and then Eric Lozano took over. Two knockdowns to the KO. The winner by way of third round knockout, Eric Lozano defeats Mike Jones. Welcome to the new BKFC app. Get monthly BKFC events for $7.99. People that are missing it are missing out big time. Enjoy our all-new library of content, including behind-the-scenes access, exclusive BKFC original series, and additional live bare-knuckle fights from around the globe. Knuckle up with the new BKFC app, only $7.99 per month. The world's most exciting combat sport, Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship, is back April 12th. It's BKFC Fight Night, Clearwater. In the main event, the formerly retired Mike the Marine Richmond returns and eyes his destiny. But destiny saboteur, Eric L. Travisio Lozano, has other intentions. In the co-main event, former world champion Elvin L. Bandito Brito toes the line with Jafar. Brito toes the line with Jafar. at BKFC.com. The numbers presented by Audit and our main event is for the inaugural BKFC Welterweight World Championship, Elvin Brito versus Caleb Harris. And you can see by the numbers right here, Caleb Harris has a five-inch height advantage, but he only has a two-and-a-half reach advantage, so he's going to want to utilize that, though, and get to Elvin Brito, because Elvin's going to want to move around, be elusive, fight when he wants to fight, not when Harris wants to fight. It's up to Harris to cut off the ring and fight when he wants to, not if it's all going to be about distance and who dictates the pace of this fight who's going to win, I believe. 
Introducing you first, lining up the red corner. Tonight, he wears black, trimmed in the proud colors of the United States of America. He stands an even six feet tall. His official weight, 163.8 pounds. His bare knuckle record stands at four victories opposite three defeats. Fighting out of Lake Mississippi, here is Caleb Lionheart Harris. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight, he wears black trimmed in gold. He stands five feet, seven inches tall. His official weight, 164.8 pounds. He also holds a veteran's bare knuckle record. Four victories, two defeats. Fighting out of Malnavo, Puerto Rico. Here is El Bandido, Elvin Leon Brito. Bill Clancy in charge of our main event, clearing the ring. Both fighters eager to come up to scratch, backing them off to their respective corners. Rito said, I have to capitalize on openings. Harris said, I have to be the more technical striker. Round number one. Black and gold trucks for Elvin Rito. Black trucks with the American flag trim for Kayla Harris. Two smart, technical, methodical fighters, Chris. Yeah, absolutely. This is as high level as it gets for us. There you go, right hand by Brito now to the body. Uh, Harris trying to return with the right hand. Big aggression from Brito. Pounding to the body. Harris firing back. Brito, big shots overhead right. Harris playing a lot of defense, looking for the right counter. A lot of punches were thrown right there. See the contrast in hand positioning. Brito, the confidence to keep his hands. Roy Jones S down to his side. Just a swing and a miss and a slip. Real correctly as such by Bill Clancy. Harris, high, tight, disciplined striking guard. Brito's only got a cut over that left eye. If you hold your hands the way Elvin Brito does, you're either really good or really bad. <laughs> Elvin Brito is really good. Brito so hard to time and figure out exactly what angle is coming from. Harris coming forward. Brito changing angles, changing stances, stepping in. 35 seconds remaining, round number one. He had a very good opening right there, landed a lot of good punches, but right now the pace is slowing a little bit. Harris staying disciplined, coming forward. Brito again on the floor. Lower leader by Caleb Harris. 15 seconds to go in round number one of our main event. Jab from Elvin Brito. Brito talking to Harris, trying to get him to engage. Left hand, there's the bell, the end of the first round. Set for round number two. Harris first up to scratch. Again, look at the hand positioning of Elvin Brito. That exudes confidence. To the second round we go. Harris coming forward. Switch of angles, switch of stances from Elvin Brito. Harris trying Chris to get his jab going early stages round two. Caleb Harris doing a good job right now. Just stands and making Rio be ready at all times. You cannot let him dictate when he fights. You have to make him be right there and ready to fight at all times. The fighters with MMA experience fighting in the clinch, looking to turn. Smart by Brito, bringing his hands together in the gable grip during the immediate break for Bill Clancy. Total punches right there. Jeez, Brito threw 72 punches. He landed 18. Not a great percentage, but just so active out there. Again, open stance, the hand 
Harris down. Literally trying to bait Harris into the pocket to land those quick shots. He's trying to keep his discipline. Lands the right hand on the step in. Slowing him to the right eye in the face of Caleb Harris. 40 seconds remaining round two. Right hand for Melvin Greer. I don't care how, how you train, it's just hard to emulate of a Brito. So you can get guys in there who, who feel they're going to fight like him, but they're not going to fight like him. It's very hard. And two reps to get out here, it's hard to learn at this place, too. It's hard to learn in the middle of a fight. One left hand for Brito off the ball. 15 seconds have to go round two. Tim on the exit from Harris. Overhand right, but then the left hand, the follow lands from Brito after the right hand miss. There's a good right hand from Caleb Harris. That draws a reaction from his home state crowd here in Jackson, Mississippi. The bell to end, round number two. Two literally homegrown stars in bare knuckle fighting championship. Round number three. Tandle on the inside, there's the jab from Brito. Just continuing to push forward, takes that right hand. There's a hand right from Brito on the exit. Harris Chris has been extremely disciplined with his hand, hand position. Well, you have to be, you never know where his touches are coming from. Clinch. Clancy doing a great job keeping this main event world title fight flowing. The two fighters not really interested in clinching. And the active clinch is on the half tie plug. Snatched by Burrito. Right back to it. The left hand is with the counter right after Harris threw the right hand. 55 seconds remaining, round three. Good jab from Harris on the entry of the right hand. Counter right by Brito. Now this might be first in a lot of these exchanges, Chris, but Brito is last. Brito just seems to always find an awkward way to throw a punch out there. And from a weird angle, it's just hard to deal with the guy like that. Overhand right by Alvin Brito. The weird thing is, you don't know how the judges are seeing that. I mean, Sometimes they might think those aren't affected. I have no idea what they're doing. Left hand sternum by Brito. That was clever. That is a good bare knuckle punch. On the second round, number three. Harris on the turn. Brito on the turn. It's been in the center circle. Naked right hand by Brito. I mean, just the comfort level. Look at Brito out there. He has his hands down. He goes the punch. He moves literally an inch out of the way and just lets it go by. He doesn't put his hands up at all. Just looks so relaxed out there like he's been doing this for 10 years. Very, very, very impressed with that and very difficult style to fight. Caleb Harris is doing a lot of things right. It's looking, it's looking difficult to do against this guy. Next stop, round number four. Very even, we thought it would be. Well, that's the hard thing. You never know. Sometimes judges are thinking, you know, this guy's being the aggressor the whole time. Or sometimes they're thinking the guy who's countering is doing better. You, you don't know. I think that's why the first time they fought it was a split decision. You don't know what they're looking at. That's what makes this an intriguing fight. To me. See you. 
you can see his talent, but this creativity is an evolution in his game. And look at that, uh, 65 more punches thrown by Elvin Brito than his opponent. a lot more body shots, too, 13 to 3. As Brito has evolved into a more creative fighter, Harris has evolved into a more technical fighter. That's really what you're seeing play out in this rematch. Chris, what will these three Mississippi judges be more impressed by? Technicality or creativity? Exactly. 25 seconds remaining round number four. Straight jab doesn't get through into the clinch. Right back out goes Caleb Harris. And a snap jab. And free to the body. Standing flush, exploded with the three punch combination. We will move to the fifth and final round. You know, one thing I'm noticing both these guys are doing very well, especially with both guys, is every time they get hit, they fire back with something. You're not seeing a lot of one sided exchanges. It seems like when Hitler Harris comes in at those good fellow Brio ends. So it just seems like they're doing a good job of not letting the other guy just tee off on them and firing back. I think you can tell we have the two best guys right now in this division who are up here fighting for the title. between Elvin Brito and Caleb Harris. Both said we have put that on the hold. We're not communicating. We'll resume the friendship after this fight. Fifth and final round. To the winner goes to inaugural titles. The BKFC welterweight strap and the Police Gazette Diamond 165 pound world championships. Harris on the right hand. Brito on the turn right hand. Harris sitting back, Harris to the body, Brito answering. Said every time Harris finds a good punch, Brito's firing right back. Brito's so explosive. Into the pocket, back out. Harris landing the uppercut. Brito's went to the body. Brito will talk about a lot of his fights. He's been trying to stay, and he doesn't get hurt. That's not happening this fight. He's throwing everything out there. He doesn't care if he gets hurt. He wants his title. Unless you're MMA lunatics like you and me, you've probably never heard of Elvin Brito and Caleb Harris. 
Paris until they came to Bear Knuckle Fighting Championship and started finding success. Absolutely, like you said, they earned the spot. They, they didn't fight easy fights at all. They went the, the school of hard knocks, they went the hard rounds, and, and they've just been getting better and better as you see. I do talk about that once you get your fifth, sixth fight in this sport, you really start to level up, and that's what they've done, and that's why they're the two best guys, and that's why this is the right time for them to be here fighting for this title. There's punches landed, Brito landed. Not quite as good of a percentage, but he landed 16 more punches through, geez, 114 more. Landed a lot of power. Looks, look at that. Unbelievable. 177 power punches thrown. That means he's not throwing a lot of jabs, but it's never. Look at that. 19 jabs, 18 jabs. Not a high percentage. Landed by either guy. But, oh, that's how many landed. But I mean, there's not that many thrown when you look at the total number of punches thrown there. Very small percentage. David Hel Feldman is holding the BKFC belt. Scott Burt, the Bare Knuckle Boxing Hall of Fame, is holding the Police Gazette belt. We see BKFC's light heavyweight champion Lorenzo Hunt wearing his belt in the ring. Suspense continues. The sold out Jackson Convention Complex. Jackson, Mississippi, the home state of Caleb Harris. Both men feeling very good about their respective performance over the full five rounds, the full 10 minutes. Jeff Houston still conferring. Commission table in the state of Mississippi. Jeff Houston now in the ring. Time now to end all suspense as we send it to Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, after completing the scheduled five championship rounds, our judges send into the ring a split decision. Judge Dixon scores the fight 48-47 in favor of Brito. Judge Dees scores the fight 48-47 in favor of Harris. And Judge Spinola sees the fight 49-46 to the winner by split decision. And new inaugural Police Gazette Diamond 165-pound world champion and new BKFC world welterweight champion, El Bandido, Elvin Leon Brito. Elation for Elvin Brito. Absolute dismay for Caleb Harris. Welcome to the new BKFC app. Get monthly BKFC events for $7.99. People that are missing it are missing out big time. Enjoy our all new library of content, including behind the scenes access, exclusive BKFC original series, and additional live bare knuckle fights from around the globe. Knuckle up with the new BKFC app, only $7.99 per month. The world's most exciting combat sport, Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship, is back April 12th. It's BKFC Fight Night, Clearwater. In the main event, the formerly retired Mike the Marine Richmond returns and eyes his destiny. But destiny saboteur Eric L. Travisio Lozano has other intentions. In the co-main event, former world champion Elvin L. Bandito Brito toes the line with Jafar Fort Knox. Watch the adrenaline-fueled action live. Download the BKFC app at bkfc.com. Jafar Fort versus Eric Sutterfield. And Sean, it jumps out the page at you right now. Sutterfield has a five-inch height advantage, a five-inch reach advantage. He's going to want to utilize that. Jafar Fort, very fast, very athletic, has to get in to land those shots. Sutterfield has to make him pay. This is BKFC 53. To get us started, we send it to the always outstanding Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you, and we welcome you, one and all, to the Orange.
Orange County Convention Center here in Orlando, Florida. And we welcome you to BKFC 53 as we are a part of the 2023 Olympia Fitness and Performance Weekend. BKFC for review begins tonight with five two-minute rounds in the welterweight division presented to you by Bucked Up Energy Drink. Introducing you first, fighting out of the red corner, tonight he wears red and black. He stands six feet four inches tall. His official weight, 163.2 pounds. Tonight, he steps into the squared circle for the second time. Fighting out of Yellville, Arkansas, here is Aaron the Joker Sutterfield. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight he wears black. He stands 5 feet 11 inches tall. His official weight, 165.6 pounds. He is undefeated in the squared circle at 2 and 0. Oh, fighting out of Clearwater, Florida. By way of Stamford, Connecticut, here is the undefeated Jafar Fort Knox. And our referee in charge of the action, Sam Burgos. Aaron Sutterfield Man, said, I don't know Move if Mumpy. Jafar Fort will oblige, but I would love to stand in the center circle and just trade punches. No, go. From the center circle, round number one, and a slide step back off from scratch for Aaron Sutterfield. He's in the red trunks. Black trunks for Jafar Ford. On the left hand, big shot right hand left hook from Sutterfield. I can tell you, Ford does not want to stand there and trade. He wants to utilize that speed, athleticism, and not get hit. Beautiful straight left. Down goes Aaron Sutterfield. It was that straight left hand. He did it the last time we saw him fight. Same thing here. Step outside that lead. Ford. Beautiful shot. Mandatory eight count to Sutterfield from Sam Burgos. Just like that, game, set, match, Jafar Ford. Just keeps rolling, Sean. Look at that. Showing that speed, that athleticism. Exploded in with that left hand right down the pipe. Steps outside, did a great job. Man, this guy is, we're going to have to step up his opponents right there. I mean, move him up the ladder as far as our rankings, because this guy just keep knocking people out, Sean. Jafar Ford now 3-0 and oh in BKFC. And most definitely a fighter to watch at 165 pounds. Not without adversity, as you see Fort cut over his right eye. And you see Sutterfield clasp between both fighters, cut outside of his left eye. It was just that very first barrage. It's all it takes is one little shot here at BKFC, Sean. It was a little punch. It landed. You can tell that Fort was not ready for that. They kind of came in and, uh, and just went at it right away. He said, I don't want to be in here trading punches. I want to be showing my skill, my speed, my athleticism. And that's what he did. Good look at uh, what exactly happened right there. Watch, wait for the right time. It's that left hand right down the pipe. You got the right handed versus a southpaw. The straight shot is what does it. The straight right or left down the pipe. Great start to this fight from Aaron Sutterfield. Again, Fort said. I want to be outside, explode in and back out. He exploded in, and by the time he moved back out, Sutterfield was on the canvas. Sutterfield definitely had his moments early on. Porto settled in, landed that left in the glancing right, and that is the fight. Here is Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, our referee in charge, Sam Burgos, calls a stop to this fight at 28 seconds into round number one. For your winner by TKO and still undefeated, Jafar Fortnox. Even though he's got a nasty cut, Fort looks phenomenal out there. Just getting better and better. You can tell he's getting more comfortable. Man, this guy is fast, athletic, and has some power in those hands, Sean. Aaron Sutterfield, a slight step off of scratch, exploded in and landed big. Jafar Fort then resetting the left hand, the right hand, and that is the win. Victorious by way of first round TKO. Jafar Fort defeats Aaron Sutterfield.
Welcome to the new BKFC app. Get monthly BKFC events for $7.99. People that are missing it are missing out big time. Enjoy our all-new library of content, including behind-the-scenes access, exclusive BKFC original series, and additional live bare-knuckle fights from around the globe. Knuckle up with the new BKFC app, only $7.99 per month. The world's most exciting combat sport, Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship, is back April 12th. It's BKFC Fight Night, Clearwater. In the main event, the formerly retired Mike the Marine Richmond returns and eyes his destiny. But Destiny Saboteur, Eric L. Travisio Lozano, has other intentions. In the co-main event, former world champion Elvin L. Bandito Brito toes the line with Jafar Fort Knox. Watch the adrenaline-fueled action live. Download the BKFC app at BKFC.com.
Air knuckle fighting warfare courses through Florida and rumbles into Clearwater. The world's most exciting combat sport, Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship, is live at the OCC Roadhouse. It's BKFC Fight Night, Clearwater, Richmond versus Lozano, and it starts right now. But how about former flyweight title contender, J.R. Ridge, towing the line against the talented local favorite, Tyler Randall. Our co-main event tonight sees St. Petersburg's own Jafar Fort Knox looking to add a four straight TKO over the former BKFC welterweight champion, the always tremendous Elvin, El Ventino Brito. And in the main event, it's been 10 months since Mike Richmond stepped away from fighting, but the Marine just couldn't stay away. The Minnesota Vinegar is back, and he's on a collision course with another knockout artist, Eric Lozano. What a main event. And we are live here in Clearwater, Florida at the world famous OCC Roadhouse. Yes, folks, what a big night we have here in Clearwater, this being the last stop on the road to Knuckle Mania 4, going down April 27th at the Peacock Theater in Los Angeles, California. Take a look at the graphic, folks. Mike Perry, Tiago Alves. You're also gonna get Lorenzo Hunt taking on Mick Terrell for that heavyweight championship. And it's gonna be Red Ben Rothwell and Todd Duffy trying to add a little bit to that San Andreas fault line. A lot of big fights. They are being announced as we speak this card is absolutely stacked and of course we want you to be a part of it as well a big night tonight though let's talk about what's happening tonight we know all about the main event but listen this might be one of the most underrated cards that we've had this fight night in this small ring it's gonna be fireworks right here at the OCC Roadhouse so let's get it started by sending it down ringside to Sean Willock and Chris Lytle thank you Cyrus Chris a really intriguing main event. This is that proverbial crossroads fight for both men. Our main event at 185 pounds, the former champion Mike Richmond versus Eric Lozano. Crossroads is right, Sean. Both these guys really need this fight. Lozano 2-2 two and two right now. If you're 2-3, and three, losing record, it's going to take you a long time to get back in that title hunt. And Richmond started off perfect, 5-0, and oh, lost his last two. This guy wants to get back in that title picture. Getting derailed right now really sets him back. They have to win this fight. Whoever wins is right in there for that title picture. Chris, your keys to victory for both main event fighters are presented by Bucked Up Energy Drink. Okay, Sean. Lozano needs to get into that pocket. He lands power shots. He wants to get into where he can land those overhands, those power shots. He has to push the pace. He wants to try and wear Richmond out, slow him down a little bit. We can land these shots. But the main thing, he has to throw power. That's what he does and does very well. When he hits you, he hurts you. Has to get into the pocket and land those power shots. Now with Mike Richmond, this guy, he used to fight at a lighter weight class. So he's fast. He's accurate. He wants to utilize that speed advantage. In there with these big, heavy, strong hitters like Lozano, he has to utilize that defense. He's got to focus on not getting hit because one shot can end the night for him. And when he gets in, he does something better than anybody else in BTFC. He works that body. He lands hard body shots. Get into the pocket. Use that speed. Use that body work. Focus on defense. Those are what he has to do to win this fight, Sean. If he does that, he's going to be victorious. BKFC uses the unified rules of bare-knuckle fighting, which are administered this evening by the Florida Commission. 
There is no three knockdown rule. All kicks, knees, and elbows are illegal, as are all takedowns and submissions. We open tonight with a bout in the featherweight division. Our tale of the tape is presented by Bucked Up Energy Drink for Quentin Gaskins versus Zap Pinnell. And Sean, from the tail of the tape here, only one half inch difference in the reach. There is a slight two inch height advantage for Gaskins, but I think it's more important about the reach. Very, very even on the tail of the tape. Zach Pinnell enters 1-0 in BKFC. His bare knuckle fighting championship debut came this past January. Pinnell defeated Casey Yates by first round knockout. Pinnell has also had 12 amateur boxing bouts. In our fighter meeting, Zach Pinnell told us, I want to throw constant combos and I do not want to move straight forward with my head down while swinging big. Instead, I want to smartly walk down my opponent, Quentin Gaskins. He wants to be in his opponent's face the entire time. Overwhelming him with his movement, and when he gets inside, he really wants to work the body. Pinnell said on the inside, short hooks, uppercuts in the clinch. Pinnell told us, for me, this is about being very physical on the inside and constant pressure throughout. Well, he wants to be very physical, Sean, but his opponent has rubbed him the wrong way. Things he was saying on social media has really bothered him, got under his skin. He wants to prove a point tonight. Quentin Gaskins set for his BKFC debut. He's had six pro MMA bouts. Gaskins is 1-0 in professional boxing. And he is also a professional musician and music producer. Gaskins told us in our fighter meeting, I have to be smart in this my BKFC debut. I have to use constant movement and I'm going to throw combinations from multiple angles. That's the thing, he was almost dismissive of his opponent, Sean. He's very confident. He said, there are levels to this game, and I am just better at all. Of his opponent in this featherweight bout, Zach Pinnell, Quentin Gaskin said, he is tough, but I think he lacks head movement, and I think that Pinnell is extremely hittable. You talked about combinations. He wants to stay extremely busy out there, overwhelm his opponent with volume. It's BKFC fight night. Clearwater to get our evening started. We send it to Jeff Houston. Hello, hello, hello. Clearwater! Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the OCC Roadhouse. Welcome to the most exciting sport on planet Earth today! And ladies and gentlemen, welcome to BKFC Fight Night! We are set for the next fight of the night, scheduled for five two-minute rounds in the featherweight division. Presented to you by Bucked Up Energy Drink. Get bucked up. Introducing to you first. Fighting out of the red corner. Tonight he wears green and black. He stands five feet six inches tall. His official weight, 144 and one half pounds. He holds an undefeated BKFC record at 1-0. Fighting out of Lancaster, Pennsylvania. There is Zach Lumac. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight, he wears red trimmed in yellow and black. He stands five feet, eight inches tall. His official weight, 145.4 pounds. He holds a combined combat sports record of seven fights. And tonight makes his BKFC debut. Fighting out of St. Pete, Florida. Here is Quentin Q. G. Gaskins! And our referee in charge of the action, Andrew Glenn. 
Quentin Gaskins told us, I'm willing to let Zach Pinnell come forward and open up so then I can establish my clean, hard counter striking. Round number one. Red trunks for Quentin Gaskins, green trunks for Zach Pinnell. Quick jab from Gaskins, hard right hand right to the body. Both fighters opening up, overhand right from Pinnell. Fast start to this featherweight fight. Double jab on the entry from Pinnell. Gaskins to the body with the right hand. You can see Pinnell really wants to throw hard punches this entire fight. He was mad about something that was going on through the social media, and it shows. There's the separation from referee Andrew Glenn. He set from Gaskins, forward from the center circle. Overhand right entry from Pinnell, right hand again. On the double jab from Pinnell. Gaskins trying to stay to the outside. 115 remaining round number one. That Gaskins jab negated. Left hook. To the body goes Quentin Gaskins, driving pressure. Pinnell with his back against the ropes, but snatching the half tie plug. Separation again from Andrew Glenn. Left hook from Quentin Gaskins. Gaskins on the overhand right, counter overhand right from Pinnell. Both fighters now bearing uppercuts to the body. Uppercut to the head with the right hand from Pinnell. Right. Step back, step back. Knock it up. To cut head movement from Pinnell, but Gaskins landed the left hand on the entry. Now, one thing I love about this small ring, it makes people fight in close quarters. We're seeing a lot of that right here. Gaskins trying to throw from that single collar tie, that half tie plum. Uppercuts with the right hand. There's the rear right uppercut from Pinnell. Smear of blood under the right eye of Zach Pinnell. 15 seconds remaining, round number one. Big uppercut, counter right hand. Gaskins hard on the entry. Pinnell sitting back, trying to time the counter. More big shots, so the right hook, right uppercut from Gaskins. Gaskins again, the uppercut, measuring from that half tie plum. That that was an exhausting pace right there, Sean. Those guys went at it the entire round. This one might come down to condition right there. If you throw fastballs the entire time, it is hard to keep doing that. Pinnell saying we can't see, I believe, on this fight might help. Yeah, I'm yeah. Sure. You see the Florida inspectors in the ring? I see like three of them right now in my own. Yep. I can't see. Yeah. Glenn is a sole arbiter. It's his decision to stop this fight, and I believe he will do so right now. He doesn't know. This is a medical timeout called by Andrew Glenn. We will get the medical assessment. First appearance of the night. Round number one of the night. I just see three of my coach and I just... I can't see. Yeah. Sorry. That is over. And the win for Quentin Gaskins in his BKFC debut. Sean, that was only one round, but that was an amazing round. Now, a lot of hard punches were being thrown by both those guys and landed. And you can just see right here, nobody took a step backwards. Every time a hard punch was landed by one guy, the other guy fired back immediately. That's exactly what you want. Like I said, Sean, both those guys went hard the entire fight. That's what happens in that when you land hard the entire time, you never know what's gonna happen. Either a cut can happen or some damage. Pinnell couldn't see well right there. He said he was seeing three of his corner man in the safety of the fighters as a main concern right there. Live to fight another day. Zach Pinnell is ultra tough. He entered 1-0 in BKFC, but again, Pinnell, between rounds one and two, and indeed we never saw a round two, told his corner, I cannot see. That information passed along to the two Florida inspectors in the corner. Then you saw Dr. Don Mootsi, and if there was a phrase that gets a fighter out of a fight, it is, <laughs> I can't see. 100% accurate. No matter what is going on in the fight, if you say you can't see, that fight is over. Fighters know that, so 
a lot of times you'll see a fighter, they'll be lying, saying they can, even when they can't. They'll be making up. Yes, I can see how many fingers you're holding up. They'll, they'll make something up just to try and get the fight. But if a fighter tells you that they know, that fight is over, Sean. That was quality from Quentin Gaskins. Landing big no, no. shots from the outside and from the clinch. Gaskins now 1-0 and in BKFC. Here's Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, on the advice of our ringside physician, our referee in charge, Andrew Glenn steps in and calls a stop to this fight at the conclusion of round number one. For your winner by TKO, Quentin Eugene Gaskins. Gaskins was extremely confident going into this fight, and we see why he trains at a good camp. He understands what this sport is about, and he went out there and showcased it tonight. Both fighters had their moments, both fighters throwing big off of scratch. Gaskins started to land from the outside range and from the clinch, bombing the rear right hand from the half tie plum throughout much of round one. Victorious by way of first round TKO due to physician stoppage. Quentin Gaskins defeats Zach Pinnell. Who owns Combat Sports now? The king of violence! Who owns Combat Sports now? The king of violence! Fans brings you our tale of the tape for this bout at 155 pounds. Angel Hernandez versus Rain Wells. And Wells does have a four inch height advantage, but more importantly, that four inch reach advantage. Hernandez is a very skilled brawler right there. Wells wants to stay outside and make his opponent pay for trying to land those big shots. BKFC debut. He is a veteran of two pro MMA bouts. Wells is naturally right-handed, he told us. In our fighter meeting, I will keep switching stances. And even though he's naturally right-handed, Wells said that my left hand, regardless of stance, is my power hand. He knows he needs to stay outside, wants to utilize that reach, wants to stay long the entire time and make his opponent pay for trying to get close with using those great punches. Well said, I absolutely cannot stand in front of my opponent, Angel Hernandez, in trade. I want to step outside quickly and then land just as quickly. He feels like his opponent might be a little nervous. A lot of internet talk. He says he's trying to talk himself into winning, not his opponent. Angel Hernandez set for his BKFC debut. He has had one bare knuckle bout outside of this promotion. He's had 44 pro boxing bouts. And Chris, that is not my Kansas accent peeking through. It's not Amel Hernandez. He prefers the pronunciation Angel Hernandez. Hernandez told us he feels he has really big punching power for this weight class. But with that, Hernandez said, I want to showcase my speed over my punching power. Has a lot of experience. He feels like his opponent is not going to be on his level. Wants to capitalize on every time his opponent makes a mistake. He's going to counter and land hard shots. Hernandez also told us 
I'm going to explode forward off of my opponent. Rain Wells misses, but I don't want to go too far forward as to get stuck in the clinch. I want to flow from the outside to the mid range to the pocket, throw my jabs, but don't let this turn into a clinch fight. It's all about punch placement. He wants to land to the chin and to the body. I saw this guy in the trials. This guy comes to fight. Back we go to Jeff Houston. Fight fans of Clearwater, we are set for the next fight of the night. Scheduled for five two-minute rounds in the lightweight division. Presented to you by OnlyFans. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the red corner. Tonight he wears maroon trimmed in black. He stands 5 feet 11 inches tall. His official weight, 155.9 pounds. His MMA record stands at two fights, and tonight makes his BKFC debut. Fighting out of Trinidad, Texas, here is Rain, the guy on the couch. Well And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight, he wears white and red. He stands five feet, seven inches tall. His official weight, 155.8 pounds. He is a boxing veteran of 44 fights. His bare knuckle record stands at one fight. And tonight makes his BKFC debut. Fighting out of Brandon, Florida. Here is Angel. G. Hernandez. And our referee in charge of the action, Chris Young. Rain Wells came from his home in Texas to here in Florida for his BKFC debut without a corner. That information was passed along to BKFC women's 115-pound champion, Jordan Hart. She stepped up and she's in the corner of Wells. Round number one. What he did right here, he waited for the right time and landed a couple of good hard right hands. That was it. We've had a three second knockout in BKFC, a five second knockout in BKFC. We'll now see the official time from the Florida Commission. That was lightning strike win. Quality for Angel Hernandez. Speed, power, and accuracy. That's a bad combination. Very difficult to deal with. If they can throw hard and connect in the right spot, ah. man, it's gonna be lights out. Just what he said, countering those misses and making your opponent pay, that's exactly what happened. And I like what the referee did right there. The referee came in, looked at how the opponent fell, looked at his face, and called it off immediately. No need to count. Fully agreed. Excellent refereeing from Chris Young. There's no reason to start your count in that situation. Young knew that Wells was done. But just like that. With the boss in attendance, David Feldman. Angel Hernandez claims victory in his BKFC debut. Chris, I think wow. you can say some of those words on TV. Interesting celebration for Dave Feldman. Hey, when you're excited, Sean, you're excited. That was an amazing knockout. Clean, hard punches landed. Beautiful. Disappointment for Rain Wells in his BKFC debut, but Angel Hernandez exploding off of scratch. Hard, clean, accurate punches to the finish. Here's Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, our referee in charge, Chris Young, calls a stop to this fight for the third fastest knockout in BKFC history at eight seconds. For your winner, by KO Angel OG Hernandez. In the trials, Hernandez had such positive energy. He's so fired up in that show tonight. He comes to fight every time, feels like he's a heavy hitter. He's gonna do great and better knuckle. 
Yuli Diaz at three seconds. Eduardo Concepcion at five seconds. And now Angel Hernandez at eight seconds. The third fastest finish in BKFC history. The winner by way of first round KO in eight seconds, Angel Hernandez defeats Rain Wells. It's really something that no one's ever seen before. So I think what they're going to see is a ton of excitement tonight. I think they're going to be on the edge of their seat the entire night because we've never seen this before. Is everybody ready to have a good time to ride? You can hear fist to skin, man. It's a sound you don't ever forget. It's, it's brutal. It's exciting. It's an incredible setup here. Incredible matchmaking. Incredible storytelling. Oh, you have to come here. To the middleweight division we go. The numbers presented by Forged Irish Stout for Mike Heckert versus Leonel Carrera. Another one of these fights, very similar here. Half inch reach difference, two inch height difference for Carrera. Very similar on the tail of the tape. Leonel Carrera is set for bout number two in BKFC. He's also had 12 amateur boxing matches. Carrera told us on our fighter meeting, my main focus is on being calm because Carrera said, when I am calm, I am at my very best as a fighter. Carrera feels like he's a very slick fighter. He wants to get in the middle, not even circle so much this time because he feels like he's a slick boxer, avoid punches and come back with his own hard shots. Herrera also told us, I'm going to keep adapting as this fight progresses. I don't want to try to force a knockout against my opponent, Mike Heckert. I want to utilize jabs. I want to utilize feints. I feel that Heckert Carrera told us will keep moving forward. I want to be aware of his overhands and hooks. Always stay smart while still finding that aggression. Carrera has complete belief in his power. Feels like from the people he spars with, he can knock out anybody. All he has to do is touch him. He's waiting for the right moment, throwing his hard shots. Feels like he's gonna get the knockout. Mike Heckert made his BKFC debut November of last year. He defeated Scott Lampert by second round TKO. And talk about power, Sean, exactly the same thing with Heckert. All he has to do is barely touch you. He doesn't have to hit you clean. Look at these punches. He lands here, just little tiny shots. All he has to do is land one of them, and you're going down. Both these guys believe in their power, but you can see right here from Heckert, he has that ability. He doesn't even have to land clean. He feels like just barely getting just a piece of you, just a little tiny bit of your chin, you're going down. Mike Heckard enters 1-0 in BKFC. He's had one pro MMA bout, 18 as an Ami in MMA. Hecker told us in our fighter meeting, I want to quote, find calmness in the chaos of this fight. I want to keep pumping my jab, be extremely accurate with my punches. That's the thing, Sean, he has power. He knows that he was, wants to be accurate. Feels like he want to come in with intent. No punches going to be thrown without bad intention. Mike Heckert said, I believe my opponent, Lionel Carrera, in this middleweight bout is going to try to sit back and carefully pick his shots. I cannot let Carrera control me from the outside. I really like what he said. He wants to start off going to the body, open up the head. Once he lands the head shot, the fight will be over. Again, Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, we are set for the next fight of the night. Scheduled for five two-minute rounds in the middleweight division. Presented to you by Forged Irish Stout. 
not here to take part, here to take over. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner. Tonight he wears blue and white. He stands six feet two inches tall. His official weight, 174.4 pounds. Tonight he toes the line for the second time. Fighting out of Miami, Florida. Here is Lionel Lionheart Carrera. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight, he wears white and blue. He stands an even six feet tall. His official weight, 175.4 pounds. He is undefeated in the squared circle at 1-0. Fighting out of St. Pete, Florida. Here is the undefeated Mike Hacker. And our referee in charge of the action, Andrew Glenn. Mike Hacker told us, I've got to continually be first. I've got to continually be explosive. Both fighters up to scratch, round number one. White trunks, light blue trim for Mike Hecker. White medium blue trim for Lionel Carrera. To exhaust my color vocabulary. <laughs> the right hand from Carrera. See the high elbow striking guard of Carrera. Forward off the hook jab is Hecker. From Hecker on the in and out motion. This is definitely one, definitely one of those fights shows that could be over instantly. Both guys have great power. Hands intentionally held low by Carrera. Overhand right from Heckert. See the very low, then the very high striking guard of Carrera, Chris. And again, that's by design. Well, you talked about it there a little bit, Sean. What Carrera's trying to do is trying to get the punch, those punches in, beating those hands down so we can counter. Almost baiting him to throw those punches so we can get a good clean shot. Captain Carrera not getting through. 60 seconds remaining round number one. We were at 175 pounds. Hecker pulling back that right hand. Another left hand from Carrera. Overhand right jab right back to the right hand from Hecker. Bigger swings. On the right hand. That's a left hand that gets through from Hecker. Hecker now coming forward. Stiff on the jab. Carrera still swinging to the center circle into the clinch. Have a moment with the hurt the other guy, Sean. Stiff on the jab, deep swelling under the left eye of Mike Hecker. Hecker on the overhand right, short right hands. Right back to the orders referee Andrew Glenn. Turning on the overhand right, clever punch from Carrera. It was legal, it was clean, and it was clever. Took from Carrera. From Hecker. On the right hand. And Sean, that is why we love this smaller ring. People come to fight the entire time. You have to fight in this ring. Now, Sean, a little bit about the way Carrera is leaving those hands down. That is a highly skilled move. You don't start off doing that. You have to start off keeping the hands up. But as you go with this field, you learn how good you are. When your eyes see the punches coming, you the other way up to counter. That's what Carrera is trying to do. He's trying to counter those punches. And Tyson's is important to throw wild shots and then you counter him. There it is. He feels like he's a faster, slicker fighter. Getting your opponent to punch and then you counter. Just like you saw in that situation, right? In that, in that situation, he countered beautifully. Hecker had his moment, so to every time he landed a good shot, you can see it did affect Herrera. One of the best rounds we've seen in BKFC in 2024. Start of round number two. The ring his stance is Mike Hecker. Very tall stance in the bounce, the bend of the knees from Lionel Carrera. Carrera heavy on the feints with the up jab. Trying to throw some distractions, moving that right hand out just to make Hecker look at that, and then he can punch right down the middle. Right to the body. Drew Glenn telling Hecker, keep your hands closed. Watch the extended fingers. Soft the referee speed. 25 remaining round two. 
Overhand right, that didn't get through. Counter right, hand right, right uppercut. Heavy into the clinch, overhook. Snatched by Pereira, separation from Andrew Glenn. Left hand from Pereira. See that deep swelling in, under, and around Heckert's left eye. Heckert on the turn. Heckert, big left hand coming forward. To the clinch. Okay. Five seconds remaining in round two. The thing I'm really liking right now, Carrera just looks so relaxed, so calm, just waiting for his opportunity to win his counter. Jab not getting through from Hecker. Right on the naked right hand. Big to the body with the right hand goes Carrera. Hecker took that punch well. Left hook not there from Hecker. No hook jab. Jab of his own from Leonardo Pereira. Andrew Glenn continuing to tell Mike Hecker, you've got to close your fingers. It is illegal under this unified bare knuckle fighting rule set to have fingers extended towards the face of your opponent. Identical to the unified rules of pro MMA. Overhand right. Overhand right again, almost a back fist, no warning from Andrew Glenn. That was an illegal punch. And that ends round number two. The problem right now for Hector is he's being predictable. Carrera can see every punch coming. He's getting so much more comfortable, so much more relaxed. He's in his element. All he has to do is wait for punch. punches to be thrown and he can count in the punch. So I can't, I can't tell you anything other than that. That's the hands where he cannot fight. Hecker has got to change things up. He can't come with these hard right hands the entire time. Take the right hand, come with the left hook. Get inside, mix it up. If he continues to throw his right hand from far out, he's going to get counted. BKFC has outstanding corner man there with one of the best. G. Hernandez, also a BKFC fighter. Both hands. See the end swell. He's left hand. Set for round number three. Here's the medical timeout. Called by Andrew Glenn. And the issue, of course, that left eye of Mike Heckert. Dr. Don Muzzi. They're trying to find out if he can see. And the answer is no. Leno Carrera, let the celebration begin. His first win in BKFC. That's all about one thing, Sean. Fighter safety. The left eye was so swollen right there for Hector. They want to make sure he can see. If you can't see that right hand coming from the left eye shut, you're going to get hurt. It's all about fighter safety. They had to stop that fight. BKFC Fight Night Live tonight from Clearwater, Florida is presented commercial free by Bucked Up Energy Drink. Two talented fighters, two very game and hard hitting fighters. And again, the issue that left eye of Mike Heckert, and that's swelling in, under, and around Heckert's left eye. Gone are the days of professional combat sports where fighters who just have vision in one eye are allowed <laughs> to continue. If you cannot see out of an eye, the fight's going to be over. Both guys had their moments in that fight. You can see the power in Heckert when he landed shots. That first round was amazing. Both guys went out and landed good shots. Each guy off balance a little bit from some of those shots. It, it caught their attention. They knew they were in a fight, but at the end of the day, it was just Carrera was able to relax out there, let his skill take over, land cleaner shots. He just felt very relaxed, very comfortable. You could tell as the fight continued to progress, he was getting better as it went. And Chris, go back to what Leonel Carrera told us in our fighter meeting. I have to be calm. That's my key to victory, Carrera said. When I am calm, that is when I'm as at my absolute best as a fighter. We go to Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, on the advice of our ringside physician, our referee in charge, Andrew Glenn, calls a stop to this fight at the conclusion of round number two. For your winner by TKO, Lionel Lionheart Carrera. And Carrera looked fantastic the more the fight went on the better he got he just looked very relaxed he's going to be a dangerous fighter if he can get in there and get a few more rounds Sean. victory for Leonel Carrera he was calm he was focused 
and he was sharp with his punches. Mike Hecker definitely had his moments, landed big shots, but Lionel Carrera was on point. The winner by way of second round TKO due to physician stoppage, Lionel Carrera defeats Mike Hecker. We're all the way live from Satellite 5. I'm Brian Socha, and as always, so much to get into this week on the Bare Knuckles Show. We're glad you're hanging out. Bare Knuckle just takes one shot. If he can land a good shot, he can do some damage. Six new major signings, a new location overseas that we're going to be doing. It gives me so much more energy and reason to go ahead and do what I do. Oh, oh, oh Jesus! <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus! That's inappropriate. <laughs> I am the number one pound for pound fighter in the world. Everything I've done has been earned, nothing has been gifted, and I'm here to take some more gold. A mix of real, he's been fighting a long time. But that doesn't necessarily make you good. That doesn't make you the man. And he thinks that just because he's bigger than me and weighs more that he can push me or push me around and lean on me. I'm going to punch a hole in Mick Terrell. I'm gonna send him home with his head down. All I have to do is touch him and you will see that I'm the champ for a reason. He thinks I'm slow and methodical, but what he's got to remember is I catch everybody. Lorenzo's got telltale signs. He doesn't even know he's doing it because he's lunging from that far out. I think when someone's bigger with a longer reach, he's going to get caught. He can't fight on the back foot. When I do get him on the back foot, he's very vulnerable. When I punch him, he's going to feel everything I've got. His mouth's going to get him in a little bit of trouble this time. I think it's going to take him through a door he cannot fully walk through. Tune in to watch me knock Lorenzo out April 27th. Next up, it is Knuckle Mania. Fight week begins in Los Angeles with our press conference. Cyrus Fees, Mario Lopez will be your host Thursday, April 25th. The weigh-ins the following day, Saturday, April 27th at Peacock Theater, LA Live, downtown Los Angeles, California. BKFC Knuckle Mania 4. Scan the QR code now on your screen to purchase tickets and for more information. Chris, we're off next week because we're ramping up for Knuckle Mania 4, our California debut, arguably the biggest event in BKFC history. Mike Perry, he is in attendance tonight. He will face a former opponent of yours, Thiago Alves, in our main event, our co-main. It's pretty much a main event on any other card in BKFC history for the Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship heavyweight title, the champion from North Shields, England, Mick Terrell versus the man who has won world titles and vertical fighting championship at 185 and at 205 from Jacksonville, Florida, Lorenzo Hunt. And, and you knew this was going to be a great card. BKFC always puts on great knuckle manias, and it didn't disappoint. I mean, all four of the top four fights, amazing. This is going to be an amazing night of fights, and everything on that card, beginning to end, stat card. So that is your co-main event. There's another very intriguing heavyweight bout at your feature fight. Two UFC veterans, Ben Rothwell versus Todd Duffy. And the middleweight bout, Alfredo Angulo was an Olympian for Mexico. He has been a world champion in boxing. He becomes the 10th major organization boxing world championship in BKFC versus one of the most popular fighters in the promotion, Jeremiah Riggs. I said every fight's there amazing. I absolutely love Jeremiah Riggs. Takes fights last minute, any notice. He just wants to fight, comes in and puts on a show every time. The guy's amazing. And Chris, our main event, Mike Perry versus Thiago Alves. What a great fight right there. Thiago Alves has fought for us a few times, and every time he comes to fight, puts on a great show. In bangers, just a fun, exciting guy. Hits really hard. I mean, that between him and Mike Perry, that might be Mike Perry's toughest test so far because Thiago's always in shape, always comes with good, straight, hard shots, and he puts on a show. What a fun fight. The California State Athletic Commission, led by Andy Foster, is welcoming in Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. We will be the debut organization for Bare Knuckle Fighting under the Unified Rules in California. 
bringing a huge card again. Saturday night, April 27th, this is downtown Los Angeles. It's called LA Live, Peacock Theater, Knuckle Mania 4. Chris, the excitement already beginning. It's sold out tonight here in Florida, and in two weeks it will be sold out in Los Angeles. That's all we do anymore, Sean. We sell out. Every time we go someplace, people are waiting. Even turning people away, I hate doing that. I said, let's get bigger vendors because I hate turning people away. But hey, you got to get your tickets early if you want to come see BKFC. Speaking of bigger venues, we will go to Mohegan Sun. Mike Perry is the king of violence. This will be for the queen of violence, Heather Hardy. She has had great success in both pro boxing and in pro MMA versus Christine Faria. She is the reigning BKFC women's 125 pound champion. That is our main event. One of the best fight venues, one of the best casino resorts in the United States, Mohegan Sun in Connecticut. Note that date, May 11th. Without a doubt, that is our biggest show on the East Coast in BKFC history. Who owns Combat Sports now? The King of Violence! Women's featherweights for you now. The numbers presented by Grunt Style Apparel for Jessica Borga versus Katarina Liener. Not sure if we've ever had a tail the tape that is so similar. Zero difference in height, weight, fist size. Only difference is a half inch reach advantage for Borga. That is very minuscule when it comes to the tail the tape, Sean. The German now based in the United States in Denver, Katarina Liener. This is her BKFC debut. Liener has had 13 pro MMA bouts, two in pro boxing. Liener told us very clear-eyed, very directly in our fighter meeting, I'm going to keep moving forward in training. I have really put a focus on knuckle placement. Chris, for a debutante to BKFC, that's one of the most intelligent fighter meetings we've ever had. We actually get fighters to ask, now what can I do, what can <laughs> I not do? Katarina Liener and her team made it clear they have really been studying our promotion and studying our sport of bare knuckles. 100%. Usually she likes to come forward, be aggressive, have a high pace, understands, and bare knuckles she needs more head movement, more footwork to avoid those hard shots and getting cut open. Katarina Liener versus Jessica Borga. Borga made her BKFC debut November 2022. She defeated Sarah Click by her first round KO. Borga believes in her power. Says she was gifted from God with heavy hands. Doesn't feel like there's any other female out there who could take her shots. And watching her first fight, Sean, you have to agree with her right here. Comes in landing very hard shots the entire time. Has complete belief in that says all she has to do is do the same in this fight, land one of those shots, and the fight will be over. Jessica Borga, 1-0 in BKFC. She's had seven pro MMA bouts. Like her opponent in his women's 145-pound match, Borga had an outstanding fighter meeting. She was focused. She was intent. Borga said, I'm really working on controlling my punches, controlling my movement. I want to be accurate. I want to use intelligent movement across the BKFC race. She does not want to come straight forward this time, clean her punches, but she has to control the pace. If she decides when and where the fight happens, that's her best chance to win this fight. Borga also told us, I want to be extremely technically sound with my punching. 
I don't want to move straight forwards and backwards. I want to stay off of those straight lines. I want to circle. I want to angle. I want to use excellent footwork in a smart and measured pace. Borga feels like she changed camp since her last fight, and she really wants to showcase her boxing. She's not just a baller. She's technically very good, very gifted, and very smart. That's what she wants to show them, that how good she became as a boxer. This has all of the ingredients to be a really good fight. Here is Jeff Houston. We are set for the next fight of the night. Scheduled for five two-minute rounds in the women's featherweight division. Presented to you by Grunt Style Apparel, America's patriotic apparel leader. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the red corner. Tonight she wears red trimmed in gold and black. She stands five feet seven inches tall, her official weight at even 146 pounds. She holds a combined combat sports record of 15 fights and tonight makes her BKFC debut. Fighting out of Denver, Colorado, by way of Schwandorf, Bavaria, Germany. Here is Katarina, the German gypsy leaner. And across the ring, her opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight, she wears black and gold. She stands five feet seven inches tall. Her official weight, an identical 146 pounds. She is undefeated in the square circle at 1 and 0. Fighting out of Lakeland, Florida. Here is the undefeated Jessica, the Black Widow, Borga. And our referee in charge of the action, Chris Young. Katarina Lehner said, I'm going to keep flowing in and out of the pocket. Crisp, hard punches throughout. Round number one. Black and gold trunks for the American Jessica Borga. Red, gold, and black trunks for the German Katarina Lehner. I thought this would be something special. It's a very special start. Both fighters throwing big, straight punches. There's the right hand from Borga coming forward off the jab. Borga went in showcase more boxing. She is coming right out of the opponent and blowing right now. On the left hand from Lehner, Borga coming forward. Lehner running forward off the jab. Caught on the forehead is Lehner. Borga with the right hand. or what it is from, but people are coming to fight tonight. Just a lot of punches being thrown right there. Katarina Lehner is a really accomplished fighter. Again, 13 pro MMA, two pro boxing bouts as she entered this her BKFC debut. But Jessica Borga was on point, long, hard, accurate punches from range. So we see sometimes people look good their first fight, or even if they don't look good, they look bad. But the second fight, some people take a huge leap forward. Borga did right there. She understands the sport better now. She came forward the entire time and landed hard shots. There was, that was a punch, I think, one of those jabs that opened up that cut. We've talked about it many times, Sean. All you have to do is land one hard jab and, and bare knuckle. That's all it takes to open up that forehead. We've seen a couple of fights to end from a jab. Well, the UFC has, of course, closed their women's 145-pound division, but here in BKFC, it is rolling. And Jessica Borga, 2-0 and in BKFC with two first-round finishes. Here's Jeff Houston. 
Ladies and gentlemen, our referee in charge, Chris Young, reaches the count of 10 at 41 seconds into round number one. For your winner by KO and still undefeated, Jessica the Black Widow Borga. And I felt like Borga went up several levels there, Sean, with just her intensity, her understanding of the sport, and, and just her game plan came out and put on a show, came straight forward the entire time, and landed those power shots. A fast start off of scratch from both Jessica Borg and Katarina Lehner. The power shots, the range, the accuracy, the knockdown to the knockout. The winner by way of first round KO, Jessica Borga defeats Katarina Lehner. It's really something that no one's ever seen before. So I think what they're gonna see is a ton of excitement tonight. I think they're gonna be on the edge of their seat the entire night because we've never seen this before. Is everybody ready to have a good time to ride? You can hear fist to skin, man. It's a sound you don't ever forget. It's, it's brutal, it's exciting. It's an incredible setup here. Incredible matchmaking, incredible storytelling. Oh, you have to come here. Live from the famous Orange County Choppers Roadhouse, BKFC Fight Night Clearwater is brought to you by Bucked Up, OnlyFans, Front Style Apparel, and Forged Irish Style. And now your next Tell the Tape brought to you by Savage Sip Coffee. 185 pounders, Jay Jackson versus Andreek Swassi. Very interesting from the tail of the tape. Both guys 5'11". However, there is a significant 5-inch reach advantage for Jay Jackson. He wants to utilize that. He knows Washi wants to get in and land those power shots. Jay Jackson has to make him pay for trying to get close. Three fights in BKFC for Idris Wasi. His debut came in May 2022 when he defeated John McAllister by first round KO. We talked about his power shots. Hooks, overhand rights, just great power with his striking ability. So he wants to get into that pocket, land hard shots, counter if he needs to. Wants to get into the range where he can land those powerful hands he has. Adrian Swasi. Except for his fourth bout in BKFC, he's had four in pro boxing and 23 in pro MMA. In our fighter meeting, Idris Wasi said very directly to us, I'm a natural counter fighter, but I'm trying not to be. I'm trying to be a very aggressive fighter. I want a fast start. I want to keep shifting. I want to keep moving, and I want to keep coming forward. Feels like he's leaner than he usually is. Fighting down, uh, fighting different weight class, so he wants to be lighter on his feet this time. Like you said, Sean, he said he really wants to be the aggressor, but lots of times he goes on back to what he does, gets on his back foot and counters. Wasi said, I am most definitely willing to take chances versus Jay Jackson in this bout to record a first round finish. My key to victory is to believe in myself. Wasi said, I have to stay strong mentally. Wants to target the body, but I love what he talked about. Internal battle, he has to believe in himself. That's a lot of fighters' biggest problem. He understands that, acknowledges it, and he's been working on getting better at that aspect. Six fights at BKFC for Jay Jackson, including March of last year, when he defeated David Simpson by second round TKO. And David Simpson, a very heavy-handed, tough fighter, so this was an amazing fight for Jay Jackson. 
just getting better and better. Dedicated all his training to bare knuckle right now, and it shows. The silly more relaxed out there, has a beautiful left hook. When he lands that, he does damage. He's won several fights with that manner. Great fight for Jay Jackson. Can't wait to see him come back again. This is fight number seven in Better Knuckle Fighting Championship for Jay Jackson. He's a veteran of 17 pro MMA bouts. Jackson told us, I have to implement heavy forward pressure. Jackson said, I feel that when I win, it's because I'm coming forward. And when I lose, it's because I sit back and I try to time counters. Jay Jackson said, I have to come forward versus Idris Watson. He had a new term I'd never heard. He wants to have a bang delicious fight. He wants to get in there and bang the entire time, get into the pocket, throw power shots. Jay Jackson also said, I have to keep a consistent high pace, left hooks. I have to be aggressive, but he was quick to note, I can't have reckless aggression. Needs to control the pace of the fight. If he determines when and where the fight happens, he's going to win. Once again, Jeff Houston. We are set for the next fight of the night. Scheduled for five two-minute rounds in the light heavyweight division. Presented to you by Savage Sip Coffee. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the red corner. Tonight he wears black trimmed in blue and gray. He stands at even six feet tall. His official weight, 185.6 pounds. Tonight, he toes the line for the fourth time. Fighting out of Sacramento, California. Here is Idris. Wasi! And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight he wears blue. He stands 5 feet 11 inches tall. His official weight, 184.3 pounds. His BKFC record stands at three victories opposite three defeats. Fighting out of Saginaw, Michigan, by way of Tampa, Florida. Here Jay Action Jackson and our referee in charge of the action Andrew Glenn Jay Jackson said I'm expecting a hard round one from Idris Wasi but if we go past the first round I think Wasi will fade rapidly round number one blue trucks for Jay Jackson Rocking blue trucks for Idris Wasi to the inside, hard to the right, body right, with the right, right hand goes Jay Jackson. And there was that left hook he likes to throw. Big left hook again from Jay Jackson. Picking himself off balance. Chest first into the ring ropes with that left hook. Another left hook. Well, I think he landed it the first time and he wants to land it early and often. He showcases that right now. Left hook again on the entry. These are all hooks, no jabs for Jay Jackson. Rossi circling out off the jab, another entry left hook, and another from Jackson. Rossi on his bike. 15 remaining round number one, hook to the body, there's the turn. Punch on the turn, that gets a soft warning from referee Andrew Glenn. Again from Jay Jackson. Big shots from Jackson, got the right hand through. Duck under from Wasi. He's staying calm on the outside. Jackson punched the turnbuckle. Huge swings again on the entry from Jackson. Loading up with the right hand. Big right uppercut. Tail from Wasi. Wasi on the right hook. Jay Jackson is just in stalking mode right now. Coming forward the entire time looking to land that left hand. Chris, these are all power hooks thus far from Jay Jackson. Keeping his composure, staying on the outside. There's the counter right hand on the entry from Wasi. He landed that. Jackson walking through it. Off the jab, another big swing. Jackson taking himself off balance. Jackson landing that, landing that left hand on the entry. Final seconds, round number right. one. There's the separation from Andrew Glenn. Jackson forward again. Wasi with the rear right hand on the one, two. That ends round number one. Sean, you have to be in tremendous shape to continue to throw nothing but bombs like Jay Jackson is doing. That left hook, when it lands, it's great, but when not, it's even more tiring. 
I'd like to see him set it up a little bit better. A few more jabs out there, but and that power right hand he's throwing and landing is beautiful. That hook he's throwing when he lands is beautiful as well. What Watsy needs to do, he needs to wait for Jay to throw that hook. Once he misses, he needs to counter with that right hand. He knows that hook is coming. Take a step back as soon as you see that telegraph left hook come in and counter with the right hand to the head. That's going to be a huge shot if he can land it. These are two very heavy punchers at 185 pounds. Jay Jackson and Reese Wasi set for round number two. The fighters back up to scratch. Holding up one from Andrew Glenn, round number two underway. There's the jab from Jackson. Jab again. The third jab. With the counter right hand from Wasi timed that well. Tuck under from Wasi. Jackson on the naked right hand. More big shots left hook to the body from Jackson. Smart on the clinch defensively from Wasi to get that separation. Into the neck. 100% of the time will draw the separation and bare knuckle under the Chief of Fight rule set. So Wasi got another smart defensive clinch. See on the left hand trying to open up into the clinch side. Headlock gets the break from Andrew Blank. He's back in for Grease Wasi. 70 seconds remaining, round number two. To the jab for Jackson. So Chris, it was largely lead left hooks for Jay Jackson in round one. Now we're seeing the long jab from Jackson here in round two. And you have to wonder if that was the game plan or is that his corner getting in his ear after that first round, telling him he needs to land more jab. That will open up that left hook. A tight striking guard for Wasi, negating that jab. See the rear hand slaps and carries a Wasi. Wasi on the turn in the right hand. 40 seconds remaining round two. Big leap in left hand from Jackson. There's the long hook. Hook to the body. That landed flush from Jackson. Seems a smart defensive clinching from Wasi to keep this fight at range. Wasi on the jab from range. Hitting on the right hand. There's a big leap in jab from Jay Jackson. Left hand, side headlock, snatched there by Jackson, a wasi landed flush to the face. Final seconds, round number two. Great, step back guys, step back. Next up, round three. Only fans brings your exclusive look at the fighter arrivals. For our main event participants, the former champion, Mike Richmond. At 185 pounds, Mike Richmond. Four and two in BKFC. Through eight bare knuckle fights, has never gone past three rounds. Eric Lozano set for his fifth bout in bare knuckle fighting championship. Two very hard hitting 185 pounders. You will see it in our main event tonight. Mike Richmond versus Eric Lozano. 185 pounds. We're sold out tonight, BKFC fight night in Clearwater, and in two weeks from the East Coast to the West Coast, our California debut. Scan the QR code for the entire Fight Week events. The press are on April 25th, the weigh-ins April 26th, and Fight Night BKFC Knuckle Mania 4, Peacock Theater, downtown Los Angeles, Saturday, April 26th. Round number three. There's a jab from Wasi. Triple jab from Idris Wasi. Again, Jay Jackson told us, Chris, he felt that Wasi was most dangerous in the first round, and then Wasi would fade badly if this went past round one. And now into round three. Well, Wasi looks like he's just starting to amp it up a little bit, starting to pick up the pace slightly in this third round. This is the fourth fight for Idris Wasi in BKFC. This is far away. The most measured, the most relaxed that he has looked. Big shots hooked to the body, and again, that smart defensive punch on the overhook from Wasi. Wasi wants to be in there countering when Jay Jackson comes in, throwing those counter punches. When they get in close, he just wants to tie up. Jackson tipping his head again, throwing big hooks. There's the left hand, the right hand, Wasi coming forward. Separation from Andrew Glenn. 60 seconds remaining, round three. 
Separation was some different penalty for Andrew. <laughs> it's high and tight for Greece Wassey. The striking guard for Jackson as he has been bombing. Hooks to the head and the body throughout those the stepping jab from Jackson. Jab again. Wassey trying to measure right to the body. Wassey now exploding four. Hands to the body from Jackson in the corner. I love what Jackson did there. He kept throwing that jab, just setting up that right hand to the body. If you keep throwing that jab, Wassey has to keep those hands up to stop it. And that opens up. Beautiful job by Jay Jackson. Wassey is cut on the bridge of his nose. On the turn. Separation again from Andrew Glenn with 15 seconds remaining round number three of this light heavyweight fight. Jackson forward, Washington himself against the ring ropes, left hook on the entry. More big shots from Jackson from the half top run. That right hand getting through. Double overhooks, the bell. He moved to round four. You got a level fight when blood gets splattered on your face. I think I just got a little bit on me. These guys are going at it. You can just see the patience of Jackson right now. He's throwing those jabs, just looking for openings. Here we go with that beautiful jab, beautifully placed. Do it again. The end of the round, Jay Jackson opening up. Doing a good job of taking whatever the defender is giving you. Seconds out cold, set for round number four. Medical timeout called by Andrew Glenn. His opponent was giving him, giving him the body, take it. Give him that left hook, take it. Give him the clinch. Sorry, guys. What he did at the end, just a beautiful move. fight for Jake Jackson. Sorry about that. BKFC Fight Night live tonight from Clearwater, Florida, is presented commercial free by Bucked Up Energy Drink. Thank you, guys. We talked about it when he first came out. Jay Jackson just keeps getting better. Dedicated oh, his whole fight career to bare Sorry, knuckle. Sorry, doesn't want to do boxing, doesn't want to do oh, MMA. Ah. And it shows he just gets better with every fight. Excellent performance for Jay Jackson and Idris Wasi who entered one and two in BKFC despite the loss. I thought this was far and away Wasi's best performance, Chris. Oh, I agree. He looked so relaxed out there, was countering well. Did some very good things. Jay Jackson was just really on point tonight and just continues to grow as a fighter. Trains at a great camp, and you just get better when you do that. The steel sharp and steel. Our strike stats presented by Bucked Up Energy Drink. Both fighters extremely accurate, 52% and 50. Just a little bit more activity for Jay Jackson. Same thing with the head strikes. Not quite as accurate for Jay Jackson, but through a lot of them. We go to Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, on the advice of our ringside physician, Andrew Glenn calls a stop to this fight at the conclusion of round number three. For your winner by TKO, Jay Action Jackson! Sean, that was probably one of the best performances we've seen from Jay Jackson. Like I said earlier, he keeps, just keeps growing in there as a fighter. Look forward to seeing what is next for him and if he can get going to get that title fight. Idris Wasi now having words with Jay Jackson. It seemed friendly and now it's tense. Jay Jackson beautifully mixing hooks and jabs. So active with his lead hand and power shots with the right hand. The winner by way of third round TKO due to physician stoppage. 
Jay Jackson defeats Adrees Wasson. We are all the way live from Satellite 5. I'm Brian Socia, and as always, so much to get into this week on the Bare Knuckles Show. We're glad you're hanging out. Bare Knuckle just takes one shot. If he can land a good shot, he can do some damage. Six new major signings, a new location overseas that we're going to be doing. It gives me so much more energy and reason to go ahead and do what I do. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> That's inappropriate. <laughs> Along the beautiful beaches of Florida, Mike Perry gears up for another grueling training camp ahead of his April 27th bout at longtime gym, Technique Boxing. Being the face of bare knuckle boxing comes with some things, and you know, that comes with uh, blood from that face, and I'm ready for that. I'm cool with that, and I'm looking to, you know, bleed from my knuckles from making his face bleed too. You know, in the past few years, um, I have built a family, and I have a lot to fight for. Uh, I'm fighting for them. I'm fighting for myself. I refuse to give up or quit. I'm a relentless warrior. Ahead of his highly anticipated return, combat sports legend, Tiago the Pitbull Alves prepares in familiar territory at world-renowned American Top Team HQ. Having yet taste defeat inside the squared circle, Alves wants to prove a point and shock the combat sports community by dispatching of Platinum Mike Perry. It's a primal thing, you know, either you have it or you don't. Uh, you know, it's when I feel free, it's when, you know, you, you can just be. When the pit bull is on, man, it's it's gonna be a fight, you know. I don't I don't come to just sit around and see how it's gonna go. I'm gonna come to fight. I'm gonna test them. I'm there to finish my opponent. That's how I always train. That's how I'm always gonna be, you know, until the last day I fight. I gotta do what I gotta do. I'm gonna punch you in the face. I'm gonna punch you in the head, face, body, arms, shoulders. I'm gonna punch him and punch him and punch him until he quits again. They're gonna quit again. Who owns combat sports now? The king of violence! Mike, Mike Perry is definitely the face of Burnout Box, you know, but and I got the call to fight him. You know, I believe in myself, I believe in my skills, I believe in my camp, and I'm gonna go out there and prove that I'm the better fighter. I think I'm tougher. Just because everything that I've been through, you know, uh, all the adversities that I had to overcome. Uh, Mike Perry kind of like took the, the easy route, you know, he left UFC when he started getting a little bit of adversity and then, you know, he, he wasn't able to stick around, you know, and fight the best of the best of the weight class. You can even compare his career in MMA with my career in MMA, you know, it's like night and day. How, do, how can he think that? How can he possibly even think that? I've been here, I've been getting after it, I've been facing people, I've been fighting these people time and time again and I haven't left I haven't given up I haven't quit and I won't and the thing about fighting is that when we're in the ring together and we told that line I don't care what he has to say I won't be talking that much and he won't be talking that much I'm gonna be talking with these and we'll see how he responds to that Mike Perry I think he's hilarious you know he's a tough dude man he, he comes to fight you know has a lot of heart a lot of grit uh, not as skilled as his mouth is, you know, he's one of that new generation where, you know, he talks a lot, you know, but his skills doesn't back up as much as he talks. But, you know, it's my job to show that. I'm the better boxer all day long, American-style boxing. He 
trains out of American Top Team. He's a traitor to his own country and his own people. He's trash fighter, trash Brazilian jiu-jitsu, trash boxing, and I'm gonna beat his bald head to a pulp. I, I visualize me putting him away, you know, knock him out cold to fight for the pleasure of fighting. You know, and that's a powerful feeling, man. That's a very powerful feeling. And uh, I can't wait to get in there and have fun. You know, I'm gonna walk away from this and not look back. I'm stronger, I'm faster, I'm tougher, and I'll see you April 27th. I can't wait to punch you in the face. And I am here, Clearwater, with the king of violence, Mr. Mike Perry, Platinum Perry in the house. We are on the road to Knuckle Mania 4, less than two weeks away. Los Angeles, California, Mike, it is gonna be you in the main event once again, this time against a former BKFC welterweight champion in Tiago Alves. Now, listen, we know he has credentials. We know he's done his thing inside of the squared circle. However, it seems like he's making it personal. He's talking about your career. He's talking about your fight skills. Is it personal with you and Tiago Alves? He don't know what he's talking about. English isn't his first language. He doesn't even know the words that's coming out of his mouth. So I'm gonna put my fist in his mouth and shut his ass up for good April 27th and it's guaranteed. Platinum Mike Perry's the best bare knuckle boxer on the planet, period. And shout out to all the guys who do this sport, because as you see tonight, you get effed up doing this stuff. But I'm just really good at it, and I'm down for it. I'm the king of violence for a reason. No doubt about it, you are most definitely good at it. That being said, your last two fights against legends of the fight game, Luke Rockhold, Eddie Alvarez, not only did you beat them, you beat them so bad they had to quit. You injured them that they could not continue. Luke Rockhold, you broke his palate. I've never seen somebody's palate broken. Eddie Alvarez, you shattered his orbital. He could not continue. When you look at Tiago Alves, less than two weeks away, what's it gonna be for Tiago Alves? Are you going there to hurt him? Yeah, um, absolutely. That's the name of the game is, is, you know, is pain. And I can take it better than he can. That's why he walked away from the sport. I'm looking to uh, put my knucks in his mouth and, uh, you know, shut him up for good, like I said. It's an interesting strategy, Mike. That being said, one last thing. You talk about your career here in BKFC. Starts in Hollywood, Florida. We go all the way to the UK, you beat MVP. Then it's Denver, then it's Salt Lake City. Now it's Hollywood, California. Hollywood, Florida to Hollywood, California. What do you have in store for these fans on the biggest show in BKFC history, Knuckle Mania 4? Yo, I'm ready for my close-up, you know what I'm saying? So we going to Hollywood with it, the other one on the west, from the east to the west, USA all the way. And uh, if I don't finish them after four minutes, then I'm out boxing them all night long, I'm here with the skills that pay the bills, and my bills is paid pretty good, baby. Mike, you're the man. You are the face of this company. It's grown leaps and bounds. How's it feel to be the king of violence in the face of BKFC? No, I'm so grateful to be here. Everyone here at, at watching this show has been amazing. You guys are so lively and you're enjoying yourselves. I can't wait to put on a show for you. I hope some of you are coming to Los Angeles. God bless y'all. God bless the fighters, man. And uh, you know, I fight with my heart on my sleeve, bro. I give it everything I got and I train my ass off for it. So it, it comes out in the show. Tiago tried to say that my talking is the best, but like, my fighting is way better than my talking, so I just want to say I appreciate y'all, and I hope y'all watch April 27th. There it is. Thank you very much, Platinum. It is April 27th. It is Knuckle Mania 4. We hope you will join us on location. We hope you will watch at home. The QR code is on the screen. As you see, we got a full week. We got Thursday, the press conference. We got Friday, the weigh-ins, and then fight night at the Peacock Theater in Los Angeles. We're going Hollywood, folks. Scan the QR code. Be a part of it. It's Knuckle Mania 4. Be there. Ladies and gentlemen, let's keep the party going. This is your tale of the tape, brought to you by Rasha.
in the bantamweight division. Travis Thompson versus Abdiel Velasquez. And in this fight, we have Thompson with a two-inch height advantage. However, he has a two-inch reach deficit. Velasquez is going to want to utilize that. Stay long, stay moving. Doesn't want to be in the striking range of Travis Thompson. Seven fights in BKFC for Abdiel Velasquez, including October 2019 when he defeated Rick Caruso by second round TKO. And Sean, that had to be a record. It was a one second knockdown. First punch of the fight. Bell rings, knocks his opponent down. Great speed, great skill. But Velasquez right here, you can see just hard punches being thrown. But the main thing he feels like is his accuracy that gives him his wins. Had a great career going, has taken some time off. Had to refocus, recenter. Feels like he's done that. He's ready to come back, make his push for this title right now, tonight. It starts. <laughs> the return of Abdiel Velasquez. Fight number eight in BKFC and his first in the promotion since July 2021. Velasquez has also had 17 pro MMA bouts. Abdiel Velasquez in our fighter meeting told us, I willingly stepped away from BKFC. I turned down fight offers. Coming back, I feel completely re-energized. Not only that, he feels like he's a better fighter now. He learned when he was away. He has more patience. He came in and just fought hard the entire time back in the day. Now he understands what's at risk, how to be patient, how to pick your shots and be a smarter fighter. Velasquez defeated his opponent in this bout, Travis Thompson. The KFC 6, June 2019 by unanimous decision. Travis Thompson said, this is not a rematch. I am a new fighter. Thompson, 10 fights in BKFC, including November 2022. He defeated Davi Diaz by unanimous decision. And Travis Thompson, nicknamed the animal for a reason, comes forward, gets in your face the entire time, and throws hard punches. Wants to make this a dirty, grimy, nasty fight. Get in there and push the pace the entire time. Just like this. Takes away your momentum, takes away everything you have, and pushes the pace the entire time. Travis Thompson was on our inaugural BKFC card, June 2nd, 2018. Tonight, here at BKFC Fight Night Clearwater, set for bout number 11 in the promotion. Thompson has also had 22 pro boxing matches, four pro MMA bouts. Thompson said, I felt that I beat out Diego Velasquez when we first fought June 2019, but regardless, Thompson said, I did not have a solid training camp. Now, Thompson said, I've had a phenomenal training camp for this rematch. Thompson said the first time around, Velasquez ran, I chased. This time he's going to run, and I will smartly cut off the ring. Applying pressure with his power was his key, but he said this new ring, this smaller ring, he absolutely loves. He said if he fought in this every time, he guarantees he would be undefeated. Like you said, sir, Sean, he wants to cut off the ring, mirror his opponent's hip, stand in front of him, make him fight the entire time. We are set for Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, nearly five years ago, these two tore apart the squared circle from moment one to moment done. Tonight, they toe the line one more time. Our next fight of the night is scheduled for five two-minute rounds in the bantamweight division. Presented to you by Russia. Upgrade to champion mindset with Russia. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the red corner. Tonight he wears black and gold. He stands five feet, five inches tall. His official weight, 136 pounds even. He is ready tonight for bare knuckle fight number eight. Fighting out of Spring Hill, Florida, by way of Puerto here is Abdiel, the Nightmare Velasquez. And a 
across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight, he wears orange, white, and black. He stands five feet, six inches tall. His official weight, 135.7 pounds. His BKFC record stands at six victories, opposite five defeats. Fighting out of Pottstown, Pennsylvania, by way of Clearwater, Florida. Here is Travis, the Animal Thompson. And our referee in charge of the action, Chris Young. Abdiel Velasquez said, I know from our first fight, Travis Thompson is tough. I respect that toughness. But Velasquez said, I know that I am much, much faster. Round number one. multi pole trucks for Travis Thompson. Black and yellow trucks for Abdiel Velasquez. Velasquez on the outside, trying to leap in with that left hand. One, two. The head movement to faint from Thompson. Thompson pulling back to the right hand. Explosion in on the Alaska's big left hand. Faint on the jab from Thompson. Thompson oh, down and that drops Travis Thompson. Clean left hand from Velasquez. Let's see if Thompson is hurt. If Abby jumps on him right now. Velasquez right hand, left hand. Said he took some time off to regroup. He looked phenomenal out there. It's exactly what Velasquez needed to come out and land some hard shots. To knock out a quality opponent like Travis Thompson is an accomplishment. It's all it takes, a clean shot. And BKFC landing right in the right spot. Sometimes it's not about your toughness. If you get hit in the eye and you can't see, that's the end of the night. That's all she wrote, Sean. You can't come back if you can't see. Without question, Travis Thompson, one of the toughest fighters in all of BKFC, but just no answers for that precision, that timing, and that clean power of Abdiel Velasquez. Fight number eight in BKFC for Velasquez, his fourth win, and he has never looked better, Chris. He did a smart thing, time off. Went back and revamped his career, understood exactly who he was. That's what he said, he learned who he was as a fighter. When you're a young fighter, you don't know exactly who you are, you're just out there fighting. He took some time off, came back, understood who he is as a fighter, what he's good at, how he can capitalize on his opponent's mistakes. He's not out there just throwing punches, he's waiting for the right time, but man, he looked fast, he looked clean. That's tough to beat Travis Thompson in that manner. He did it beautifully. Look how happy he is, man. He's wanted this for so long, taking time off. That's tough to do to reinvent yourself. Man, really happy for Abby right now. You see the left eye of Travis Thompson. Stay down on the second, knocked down to count of 10. Florida condition is outstanding. You see the medical attention being given to Travis Thompson. Abdiel Velasquez told us in our fighter meeting, through his original seven fight run in BKFC, he had a quote, slug it out mentality. Velasquez said, in my return, as I wish to start my new run in this promotion, I'm going to be fast, I'm going to be clean, I'm going to be in and out with my striking. Check, check, and check. We go to Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, our referee in charge of the action, Chris Young, reaches the count of 10 at one minute, three seconds into round number one for your winner by KO Abdiel, the Nightmare Velasquez. Could not be more impressed with what Abby did out there. After so much time off, you could just see what he was working on 
accuracy, speed, looked phenomenal out there against a very tough, against the animal, he did a great job. Two knockdowns to the knockout finish. Clean, crisp, hard punches in victory. The winner, by way of first round KO, Abdiel Velasquez defeats Travis Thompson. It's really something that no one's ever seen before. So I think what they're going to see is a ton of excitement tonight. I think they're going to be on the edge of their seat the entire night because we've never seen this before. Is everybody ready to go? Time to ride! You can hear fist to skin, man. It's a sound you don't ever forget. It's, it's brutal. It's exciting. It's an incredible setup here. Incredible matchmaking. Incredible storytelling. Oh, you have to come here. April 27th, the BKFC will make shockwaves throughout combat sports with the most highly anticipated event in company history. Combat sports star Platinum Mike Perry aims to put on another instant classic. Shades of Rocky Balboa versus Apollo Creed. Against former BKFC middleweight champion and MMA legend, Tiago the Pitbull Alves. Oh, Undefeated in the BKFC, the king of violence, Platinum Mike Perry, plans to finish Alves in devastating fashion. Never one to shy away from a firefight, Tiago Alves plans to meet Perry head on in a clash that will go down in history. I'm the king of this shit, man. When it comes to trading punches, stay in the pocket, nobody can fuck with me. Before the two stars in the main event toe the line, a pair of heavyweight bouts will take center stage as BKFC heavyweight champion Mick Terrell aims to make his first title defense against the ruthless challenger. Lorenzo the Juggernaut Hunt, who's attempting to make history as the first three division champion, along with the highly anticipated clash between heavy handed Big Ben Rothwell and the always dangerous Todd Duffy. An action packed card on what is sure to be an historic night, and it all goes down April 27th in Los Angeles, California. Our BKFC debut in California. Fight week begins in Los Angeles. Thursday, April 25th. Fight night, Saturday, April 27th. Scan the QR code on your screen for more information. BKFC Knuckle Mania for Los Angeles. And to purchase tickets to arguably the biggest event in BKFC history. The man who has made it all possible, David Feldman. He is our founder. He is our president. He is our CEO. David. We are rolling on BKFC, so much so that we are now going to California, debuting in Los Angeles at Peacock Theater. Yeah, unbelievable, Sean. I mean, it took us so long to get here, to get to this point where we were starting to get accepted among all the big states. And this is the biggest state that we could have got accepted in. And April 27th, we're going to show all of California what Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship is all about with our biggest card we've ever had. It's going to be an amazing night for us. Now, Dave, I mean, you're getting so many good fighters on these cards. When you call, are people excited to be on the biggest card ever? You have to talk them in there. What's going on to get these guys on there? How do you get everybody on there? Because you think they're like, no, I want to be the main event. You're not the main event. You're the fourth fight. This is such a good card. Everybody wanted on that card. Okay. <laughs> Chris, every single person wanted on that card. I mean, we put together a stack card. I think from the first fight to the last, it's going to be an amazing, amazing night. The star-studded celebrity list is just getting out of control. There's going to be so many celebrities there. It's going to be a great Great night of fight. It's going to be a great debut. It's going to be a packed house. It's everything we want for Knuckle Mania 4. It's going to be there April 27th in Los Angeles.
David Mike Perry earlier in the ring being interviewed by Cyrus Fees coming over from the UFC. I have to go back to Mark Coleman as the last fighter who exited the UFC and became a bigger star. That happened with Coleman and Pride in the early 2000s. That has happened with Mike Perry. He's gone from a star to a full-blown superstar. Yeah, I mean, I, I really truly believe he's one of the biggest stars in all of combat sports, really. And he's right here at Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. I mean, that shows the power of, of the growth of the company and the growth of the rapid fan base that we have that really gets behind the fighters and, and grows this thing, man. I mean, everywhere he goes, he's signing autographs. He's getting bigger and bigger. But the real story is all the other fighters that are following and all the ones we're building. And the, and the man, I just wish I could tell you about my conversation yesterday. And I can't, but I will on the next interview <laughs> on April 27th. We're dropping bombs. Dave, I feel like with this sport you talked about, it feels like with Mike Perry, it's almost like we took Mike Perry and said, let's build a sport around him. Let's make the rules about this guy. We were here first, but it almost feels like it was built for him, does it not? I mean, unbelievable. I mean, if, if, if there was ever a sport built for a fighter, this sport <laughs> was built for that fighter, Mike Perry. I mean, who eats punches the way he does and just laughs it off and then knocks out his opponent not 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 knocks his opponent out makes his opponent quit right puts him in a submission it's really it's truly unbelievable i mean he's been he's been phenomenal and now he headlines against tiago alves look tiago alves has been out for a while he's a former champ undefeated He's fought everybody in the UFC. He is a tough, tough dude. Including Chris, by the and way. Including Chris. This is going to be an amazing main event. Um, Co-main event and feature fight. It's going to be stacked. I'm pumped for it. I really can't wait to show California what we have. Um, we're also, that week, we're on April 23rd, we're dropping a book called Bare Knuckle. That, that's about the beginning of how we started Bare Knuckle on the underground and how we got it to be BKFC. So that book actually drops that week as well. So it's going to be an exciting week for us. Saturday night in Los Angeles, Peacock Theater, that's downtown L.A., L.A. Live, Knuckle Mania 4, our California debut from the West Coast to the East Coast. This will be our biggest Eastern Seaboard show in BKFC history. I love Mohegan Sun. Thanks to Mike Mazzulli welcoming in Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship, and we open with a huge card in Mohegan Sun in Connecticut. Queen of Islands title, Heather Hardy from boxing and MMA to BKFC versus Christine Faria, who's been dominant as the Vertical Fighting Championship with its 125-pound title. Yeah, man, it's going to be a great, great main event. Heather Hardy versus Christine Faria. A tough test for Christine. As you know, she hasn't been stopped. It, it's hard to stop her. It's hard to stop her momentum. And then the co-main event, we got Jimmy Rivera versus Daniel Strauss. I mean, an unbelievable co-main event. We've got the debut of former UFC um, ultimate fighter, actually ultimate fighter winner, Mike Trezano. It's going to be an amazing stack card from top to bottom. I'm excited about that. I'm really just excited because I want to see how many shows in a row we can sell out. I think we're on our eighth or ninth sell in a row, and I hope it just keeps going throughout the year, and it looks that way. There are so many good fighters in that region. Well, Mohegan Sun is. We haven't been able to really tap into that. People from New York, people from Philly, people from your neck of the woods. I mean, do you really think all these people are going to flock in this area? Because, man, you haven't been able to put it there, but I know they want it. Yeah, absolutely. Every, everybody's really excited. Like, even around where I'm at, they're like, oh, it's driving this, it's driving this, let's go. I think our first show up in the Northeast like that, I think it's going to be a home run. We're at, we're at really the mecca of combat sports in the Northeast, Mohegan Sun. And as you said, thanks to Mike Mazzulli for getting that across the line for us. But it's going to be another tremendous event. I mean, and then we end up um, going to uh, Mexico. May 25th, yep. our return to Mexico. David, so let's put this in perspective. The last time we were in Mexico, February 2019, Chris likes that right <laughs> That was his final fight to finish 3-0 in bare knuckle. Absolutely, absolutely. That was a tough fight for you, Chris, but I mean, you came out victorious. You found a way to win like you always do. Great, great night for us in that baseball stadium. I remember the one thing I remember about that is I had a translator with me and a bodyguard because the guy had, I was, I was a little concerned down there. But everybody went like this. They said, Boxio no more, Seguante, Seguante, Seguante is clean fist in Spanish, and I was like, wow, that's like what really shook me, I was like, wow, we're really on to something, them hardcore boxing fans were turning on the, on the Seguantes. That's the thing right there, Mexican boxing is so popular, they do so well, and, and we're there finally, I think that sport's going to blow up there, so happy to be going back, because man, they loved it when we were there, and I think they've been watching, they're paying attention, they're loving it even more, we're going to put a lot of fights on the Mexico, I believe. Absolutely. 
we've been starting our, our relationship with TV Azteca. It started, it started about a month ago, and we've been running some reruns on there. Million, million two viewers at midnight. It's been unbelievable, the reception that we got down there. And now we get to do live shows for the live audience on TV Azteca down there and on the app around the rest of the world. It's going to be unbelievable fights, unbelievable atmosphere. I mean, it's Mexico. They love to fight. David, we're sold out tonight here in Florida. In two weeks, we expect a sellout at Peacock Theater in Los Angeles. Our California debut Saturday night, April 27th, Knucklemania 4. All because of you. Well done. All because of all of us, man. David Feldman with us. We're looking forward, Cyrus, to Knucklemania. But right now, we keep rolling. And speaking of Knucklemania, you're with one of the main card participants. I'm standing by here with the rugged beauty, Crystal Pittman. We're talking about Knuckle Mania 4, obviously the biggest event in the company's history, and you are part of the only female fight on the card. That's a big deal, taking on Claudia Zamora. You have to be so excited not to only be on Knuckle Mania 4, but to go back home to California. Yeah, I'm so excited. Oh, man, going back to California, my family's going to be there. I'm so grateful because not very many people know, but I am a mommy, and my son lives so he's gonna be there and I'm just so ecstatic. I'm so grateful to Dave Feldman, Nature, everybody to that got me on this card. To be the only female fight is so fucking awesome. It is pretty awesome. So your son's going to be there, so he's gonna actually be in the arena. He's gonna watch you throw down. I wish I could bring him in the arena. Usually when I'm practicing, he'll be outside he's like, yeah, come on, come. But he'll be up there somewhere and it's his birthday, so it's amazing. You know, you talk about your time here in BKFC. You've had a great career. You continue to reel off wins. I know a championship would be like the icing on top, right? Do you feel like you're getting that much closer? If you get this win with Claudia Zamora, that you're going to be that much closer to that tight opportunity. I, I really, really do. And I would be so grateful for that opportunity. I've been working so hard in every fight. I'm a different fighter. And I'm so grateful for my ship family for that. After this fight, I really would love to have a 135 title fight. That would be amazing, because I am the only 135 female that does have the most wins. So I would love to see the girls grow in that division and pull in a title fight. That would be amazing. 100%. Crystal, good luck at Knuckle Mania 4. We will see you on April 27th, and hopefully we'll see you there too. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get to our next bout. It's your tail of the tape, brought to you by OnlyFans. Feature fight time in the flyweight division. J.R. Ridge versus Tyler Randall. And as you see here, a two-inch reach advantage for Randall as well as a one-inch height difference. But Randall likes to stay long, wants to stay outside. He knows he has to utilize that reach because J.R. Ridge wants to get in and throw those combinations. Four fights in BKFC for Tyler Randall, including April 2022, when he defeated Joshua Ritchie by third round KO. You can see what I just talked about, staying long, throwing hard shots, has complete belief in his power. He wants to land hard shots on people, and when he does so, just like that, just a jab. When he lands a good punch, he hurts people. Feels like he's too strong for a lot of the guys in this weight class. Wants to stay long and make you pay. As you saw right there, his opponent came in and got hit with that punch, went down. This is fight number five and bare knuckle fighting championship for Tyler Randall. He's had one pro MMA bout. He wrestled at the NCAA Division III level at Portland State College. Randall in our fighter meeting said, J.R. Ridge is definitely a better boxer than me. But keep in mind, my MMA experience, my college wrestling experience, Tyler Randall said, I am the much better fighter. And I love that distinction. He didn't care about the boxing ability, he cared about the fighting ability. Feels like he really understands this sport a lot better now. Wants to utilize more volume out there than he was before. He's too focused on placement. Just wants to continue to come overwhelm his opponent with a lot of punches. Five fights at BKFC for J.R. Ridge, including November 2022, when he defeated Chancey Wilson by unanimous decision. And the thing that he's so good at, look at this athleticism displayed by Ridge. Just gets into the pocket and unloads on you. So quick, so fast at getting in and out of this pocket. And when he gets in the pocket, 
tries to unload combinations, making you cover just like he does in this situation. But using that athleticism, that in and out motion, if he gets into where he wants and lands punches, he does a lot of damage. Born in the Philippines, based here in Clearwater, Florida, J.R. Riggs. Riggs told us I'm going to continually utilize my jab. Smart entry, smart exits, in and out of the pocket. Counter punching is my key to victory. But when he counter punches, he has to make his opponent pay. Have him open up to those looping shots. Come back with combinations and make him pay each time he misses. Get in the pocket, in and out motion, make him pay. Ridge also said, I'm going to properly set up my punches of my opponent, Tyler Randall. I respect his, quote, grittiness, but Ridge said, quite simply, Randall has never fought anyone with my speed. As you talked about, he knows Randall is tough, but he says it doesn't matter. With his counter-punching ability, he's like waiting for these, these shots, these looping punches that are gonna come. Get out of the way and counter. That's all he has to do to win this fight. Use that eyesight, close the distance, throw those combinations. Rich said, solid offense, but also very solid defense. Be clean with my striking and clean with my movement. Feels he's really been working on that jab. Feels like if he can use that jab, work behind it to get into those power shots to help with that in and out motion, that's gonna be one of his keys. Back to the ring and Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now set for our feature five of the night. Scheduled for five two-minute rounds in the flyweight division. Presented to you by Forged Irish Stout. Not here to take part, here to take over. Introducing to you first. Fighting out of the red corner, tonight he wears red and gold. He stands five feet six inches tall. His official weight, 125.9 pounds. His BKFC record stands at two victories opposite two defeats. Fighting out of Hoosick Falls, New York, by way of Fort Myers, Florida. Here is Tyler, the rookie, Randall. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight, he wears white and silver. He stands five feet, four inches tall. His official weight, 125.7 pounds. His BKFC record stands at three victories opposite two defeats. He is a former world flyweight title challenger. Fighting out of Clearwater, Florida, by way. The Philippines. Here is JR the Lion Ridge. And our referee in charge of the action, Andrew Glenn. Tyler Randall told us I believe that I can break JR Ridge through high volume and powerful short punches. Sporting touch of hands around number one. White trunks for J.R. Ridge. Red trunks for Tyler Randall. Double feint. Feint right back. Measured start from both men. Left hook just off the mark from Randall. And I like how Ridge pushed off that back foot, closed that distance, exploded in, right back out. Randall circling to the body. Overhand with the right over and right again from J.R. Ridge. Three naked right hand from Rich. Randall heavy on the feint once more. There's the naked right hand from Randall into the clinch. Heavy in the clinch. Defensive clinch bringing his hands together. Baseball back grip is Rich. Separation from Andrew Glenn. And Rich really wants to push his opponent back into the ropes. That's when he likes to unload those combinations. Naked right hand again on the step in from Randall. Randall keeping a very open chest, open guard, intentionally trying to bait in J.R. Ridge. And you can see Ridge really targeting that body as Randall throws that jab, opens up that body. You can only see red marks on the ribs to the left side of Randall right there. Jab not there, good pull from Ridge. 
Loomis with the right hook to the body from J.R. Ridge. Five seconds remaining, round number one of our feature fight. We are at 125 pounds. Lead left hook from Randall. Overhand right from Tyler Randall off the mark. Chris fighters still trying to fully settle in. They're trying to find their range. Once again, Ridge throwing that hard right hand to the body. Jab off the mark. Heavy fainting from both fighters. Right hand off the mark to the body. Stepping right hand. Off the mark from Randall. Resetting. From the jab, the bell. We are through the opening round. Beautiful. I like it. The thing I really I enjoyed. In that round was the way Ridge threw that right hand in the body. What he's going to do is going to continue to land that right hand, hurting the ribs on the left side of Randall. But afterwards, let's see if he decides to go upstairs, fake that hook to the body, that that right hand in the body, and go upstairs because Randall will start dropping that left hand to block the ribs. That is the goal of continuing to throw that right hand in the body. He'll drop it, and then you can set up that knockout punch. Randall talked a lot about throwing with more volume. He needs to do that in that situation. He cannot just throw one punch and let J.R. Ridge counter with that right hand. He's going to throw two, three punches and make Ridge freeze in his tracks, not want to continue to come in to throw that right hand to the body. Seconds out called. Andrew Glenn bringing both fighters up to scratch. When he touch of hands again, and round number two underway. He faints on the step in from Tyler Randall. Chris, the respect flowing in both directions because both Ridge and Randall exceedingly quick fighters. Jab to the body. Good left hook. Jab hook then from Tyler Randall. That's so what I was just talking about. Throwing more combinations, more than just one punch at a time. Randall trying to come forward, heavy into the clinch. Good turn by J.R. Rich. Half time run now from Tyler Randall. Heavy on the clinch over the neck, over under, and that draws the separation from Andrew Glenn. The left hook on the step in from Rich off the mark. 65 seconds remaining, round number two. Half jab off the mark from Rich. You can see the way Ridge right now, he gets out there and he puts his head right in front of the opponent, waiting for him to throw so he can counter. Hook, definitely blocked by Ridge. He's trying to cut the ring. Leads that lead left hand of Tyler Randall. 40 seconds remaining round two. Heavy off the front foot now comes J.R. Ridge. Randall cut, corner of his left eye. In the center circle and the jab from Ridge. Hook jab off the mark. Long jab. There's the left hand, which nearly walked into that. Didn't catch him flush. Left hook again from Randall. The bell next stop, round three. Only fans brings you our exclusive look earlier today. The arrivals of our co-main event fighters, Jafar Fort, 3-0 and in BKFC, entering the biggest fight of his life as he faces in the welterweight division, the former BKFC welterweight champion, Elvin Brito. Brito is set for fight number 10 in BKFC in his first in 11 months. You will see it next, BKFC Fight Night Clearwater. It's our co-main event in the welterweight division. Undefeated Jafar Fort versus the former champion, Elvin Brito. Round number three coming up of our feature fight as we are sold out tonight in Clearwater, Florida. Ridge talked a lot about countering off his opponent's punches, making him pay. Did that very well in the first round. It was more difficult in the second. Let's see if he can get back to that measure in the third round. J.R. Ridge versus Tyler Randall. To of the elites of 125 pounds in bare knuckle fighting championship. 
Ooh, left hook not there for Ridge. See the feint, the feint again from Randall. That's a feints, Chris, from Tyler Randall, and a lot of pulling punches back mid-flight, just like that on the lead left hand. And two off the mark from Rich. Left hook off the mark from Randall. There's a stiff jab from Tyler Randall. 80 seconds remaining, round three. No forward pressure now for Randall, trying to methodically cut the ring. Looking for the level change. There's the jab overhand right off the mark from Ridge. And Ridge is totally committed right now to counter punch, and he's not getting off first very much at all right in, in, in this situation right there. I would like to see him get off first a little bit just to mix it up. Both fighters experiencing swelling under their right eye. So full pressure again from Randall. Overhand right again, missing from Ridge. Ridge is letting Randall control the pace of the fight, when and where it happens. He needs to mix it up a little bit more, I think. 30 seconds remaining, round three. That's the verbal feint from Tyler Randall. <laughs> to the body goes Ridge. Pressure again as you hear the 10 second clack. Acknowledge this touch by Andrew Glenn. Randall again off the lead left hook. Stiff jab from Tyler Randall to the body. And that ends round three. Randall really doing a better job right now of dictating when and where the fight happens. That's why he's having success. Ridge is constantly trying to counter, letting Randall dictate where it happens. He knows exactly. What his opponent's gonna do is gonna weigh in counter, so he's just throwing little punches, getting in his range, landing just what you see right there, that beautiful jab, keeping his opponent at bay. The one time right there, Riz did try to come and he got countered. Uh, throwing multiple jabs to get in. Make your opponent lift his hands up, not be there to counter that punch. And if he doesn't cover himself up, keep jabbing until you hit that punch. This is our seventh fight of the night and our first round number four. Up to scratch is Randall. Now up to scratch is Ridge. The sportsmanship continues. The respect continues between these two elite 125ers and round four underway. And the feints continue as well from both men. It was the verbal feint that time from J.R. Ridge. That hook definitely blocked by Ridge. To the body, nothing there. To the head, nothing there in return. Both fighters' defense, Chris, has been brilliant, but and that's really at the expense of their respective offenses. I feel like it's a little bit too predictable right now for Ridge. He's just waiting to counter. If he would come out and throw a three, four punch combination every now and again, coming forward, that would make Randall second guess when he's gonna punch, when he's not. He, he's right now, he knows he's just gonna throw a jab. The jab not there. There's the counter left hook. Randall partially landed back. 50 seconds remaining, round four of our feature fight. Some disquiet now in this very pro J.R. Ridge crowd in his home state of Florida. Jab from Randall. Randall now trying to mirror the hips. Stiff jab. Can you hear the yelling? And that's to disrupt the rhythm of J.R. Ridge. Fair game. Ridge talked about being able to counter so much. He hasn't counted much at all in this round. Just getting hit with that jab. Not coming forward. From his right nostril. Good flurry in the inside from Randall. Rich to the body and the level change overhand right just off the mark. From the clinch. Full tie punch snatched by Randall. That ends round four, and we move to the fifth and final round.
And exactly what I was talking about, I feel like that's what Riggs needs to do more often, explode in with combinations. He cannot constantly sit back and wait to counter because that strategy did not work in that round, Sean. This is a very close, very competitive fight. You have to think both fighters right now feel like they have to win this round. If I'm in Ridge's corner, I'm telling him, push the pace. If I'm in Randall's corner, I'm telling him, keep doing what you did that round. Control the pace with that jab. Push your opponent backwards. You dictate when and where the fight happens, and you'll win this round. My colleague Brian Sosik forming his sold-out Florida crowd. This is the fifth and follow round, and that fifth and follow round now underway. Previous four rounds have been very close. And head right off the mark to the body from Rich. For the level change, couldn't fully find it. Ridge was landing those hard right hands to the body in the first round. He's abandoned that, hasn't seen it much since that first round. Right hand. Good parry on the left hand by Ridge. Trying to methodically cut off the ring, Tyler Randall. Staying on his back foot now, J.R. Ridge taking himself against the ring rope, circling out. And 10 remaining in this fight. This is the pace that Randall wants. Dictating, controlling where the fight happens, countering beautifully. You hear the gamesmanship again throughout this fight, Chris, from Tyler Randall. Not only the feints, but yelling without throwing again. That's fair play, but that's the disruptive rhythm and the timing of J.R. Ridge. The Ridge having a lot of trouble of getting in, countering like he thought he'd be able to. And forward again is Tyler Randall. It shouldn't always matter, but often in very close rounds, if you come forward, the judges really like that. And right now, it's Randall coming forward in the fifth and follow round, and it's Randall waving J.R. Ridge forward, who stays on his bike. That flying freely out of the nostrils of J.R. Ridge. Ten second clock, stretch drive of this fight. Randall pointing to the canvas saying, let's stand out, trade. The bell, and the end of our feature fight. Sean, I felt like Randall did a beautiful job the last two rounds of controlling when and where the fight happened. A lot of times, as you alluded to, the judges will see that as ring generalship, ring control. And in a close round, they're gonna give that to you nine times out of 10. The unified rules of bare knuckle fighting, just like the unified rules of professional boxing, when you're looking at judging criteria, the first thing you're assessing are clean, effective strikes to legal targets. When you get past that, if you're not seeing a difference, you look to things such as ring generalship. It's called cage control in MMA. It's the forward pressure fighter. And that's not the main factor, but when it's a very close round, that sometimes that's the only deciding factor you have. Our strike stats presented by Bucked Up Energy Drink. A lot more punches being thrown by Randall. 50 more punches, and slightly better percentage as well. And man, a big difference in head strikes thrown and landed. Render really dominated in that aspect. Over four times the strikes landed to the head. J.R. Ridge, Tyler Randall have gone the distance. This is a key fight for both men. Ridge entering three and two in BKFC. Randall entering two and two in BKFC. Sean, these judges thought they were just getting free front row seats. They actually had to do their job right now. Again, this is fight number seven of nine. Our co-main and main still to come. The previous six fights 
had finished either in round one, two, or three. See the outside and be in the bathroom, but glory to God, I got a second rep. I guess it's funny for this, baby. So we await the telling of the three Florida judges' scorecards. Well, you can tell right there, Randall feels very confident that he won. In a great mood, excited. Much more pensive look on the face of J.R. Ridge. You saw the big smile on the face of Tyler Randall as you see Mike Perry in this sold out crowd here in Clearwater, Florida. To end all suspense, we go to Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, after completing the scheduled five rounds, our judges at ringside score this fight 49-46 in favor of Randall. 48-47 in favor of Ridge. And 48-47 to your winner by split decision. Tyler, the rookie, Randall! And it was definitely those last two rounds where Randall was able to dictate the pace that won him that fight. I thought he did beautifully in those last few rounds, especially, Sean. In the biggest fight of his BKFC career, the biggest win of his BKFC career for Tyler Randall. The math equates to 4-1 and 3-2 for Randall. The dissenting judge seeing it three rounds to two for Ridge. The winner, by way of split decision, Tyler Randall defeats J.R. Ridge. Why pay over a hundred bucks a month for cable when it's half the cost for Fubo TV? Get all the channels you want. Breaking news and live sports. Entertainment for the whole family. Rated number one in customer satisfaction by JD Power. Try free at FuboTV.com. We the people are desperate for common ground. On this, we agree. Those who protect our freedom and families deserve our unwavering support. We give it through folds of honor. We the people have found what unites us. We will meet sacrifice with hope. Join us. something that I work on throughout my camp it's called the Raja. It's super key for me. It's really helped me. My name is Dr. Jair Rivera de Henio. Raja stands for Reciprocal Antenna System for Holographic Activation. Key benefits that athletes can receive is stress relief, relaxation, reduce inflammation, less performance anxiety. If you're interested in upgrading your performance, come visit us at therasha.com or our Instagram at Raja Revolution.
Tonight, in the co-main event, Jafar Fort Knox, who remains unbeaten, looks to continue his reign of terror by using his knockout power that's left a trail of destruction in his wake. But he faces his hardest task yet, a former BKFC world champion and an OG of the sport who refuses to back down from any challenge, Elvin El Bandito Brito. Then, in the main event, BKFC legend Mike the Marine Richmond makes his highly anticipated return, ready to prove that he's still one of the best fighters in the sport as he toes the line with a dangerous fighter who never left the sport, a man prepared to shock the world with his third KO under the BKFC banner, Eric El Travisio Lozano. These are your main events. Live from the Sunshine State at the OCC Roadhouse, this is BKFC Fight Night Clearwater, Richmond versus Lozano. And it starts right now. Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship is presented by Bucked Up Energy Drink. Clearwater, Florida, home to beautiful beaches. It's home to Hulkamania. And tonight, it's home to the baddest athletes on the planet. BKFC Fight Night Clearwater at the world famous Orange County Choppers Roadhouse. Coming up next, it's been almost two years since Puerto Rico's Elvin Brito lost his BKFC welterweight title. Tonight's bout against Jabbar Fort could be his first step back to the top of the division. El Bandito versus Fort Knox tonight. And in the main event, these two opponents have one thing in common. They are always looking for a highlight knockout. Former Tiger challenger, Mike the Marine Richmond and the dangerous Eric Lozano, toe to toe, nose to nose, in what should be an absolute barn burner. And we are packed out here at the OCC Roadhouse in Clearwater, Florida. A great crowd, a wild crowd. We got a lot of bikers in the house. We got a whole different crowd here. But one thing is for sure, they love BKFC just as much as anybody else. You know, there's been brawls in, but you know, Paul Senior's had to break up some brawls. He's had to throw some chairs. Well, tonight, we are throwing hands in a very, very big way. And the card has delivered. In fact, seven fights, six have been finishes. Let's take a look at those highlights right now. Quentin Gaskins got us started. And it didn't take long for him to pull a big TKO. It was only one round. Zach Pinnell could not continue. And then going for history, Angel Hernandez, eight seconds. Knockout over Rain Wells. Incredible. Lionel Carrera taking on Mike Heckard. This one a nice little slug fest, but it turned out being a medical stoppage. Lionel Carrera getting the W tonight. Jessica Borga, Katarina Liener, and this one took no time at all. Jessica Borga was absolutely a woman possessed, injecting that sweet venom. Getting the big win, Jessica Borga, getting it done tonight. Jay Jackson, Idris Wasi. This was a slugfest, but Jay Jackson was a man on a mission, and it showed. And it was one big nasty cut that had to stop the fight. Jay Jackson dominant, though. Abdiel Velasquez, Travis Thompson. Travis Thompson making his return, but Velasquez just had too much for him. Short shots, direct shots. Velasquez gets it in two knockdowns. Then J.R. Ridge and Tyler Randall, your feature bout. Former title challenger, J.R. Ridge, but Tyler Randall looking tremendous tonight. Getting the win. Local boy. Well, folks, this is, as I've said, the last stop to Knuckle Mania 4. That's because less than two weeks away, we are going to be in Los Angeles, California for the very first time. April 27th, Knuckle Mania 4 from the Peacock Theater. Perry versus Alves, Terrell versus Hunt, heavyweight championship. And they are going to make the earth shake. Rothwell and Duffy, plus an incredible undercard. What a night it is going to be. Knuckle Mania 4. And if you haven't 
become a part of it yet if you haven't ordered it if you haven't got locked in for knuckle mania now is the time go to bkfc.com and be a part of history in fact you don't have to go to the website you can just actually scan that right there with your phone bkfc.com or scan the qr code be a part of knuckle mania for it You'll be glad that you did. Still got our co-main, still got our main. We got four killers in these fights, so let's send it down to two more killers, <laughs> Sean Willock and Chris Lights Out Lytle. Thank you very much, Cyrus. Chris, our main event, we talked about this at the opening of the broadcast. This is pivotal for both men at 185 pounds, the former champion Mike Richmond versus Eric Lozano. Both guys are successful, but different reasons why. Mike Richmond right here, speed and accuracy. He used to fight at 145, now he's up to 85, but he still fights with that speed and accuracy. Right here, he had to deal with some adversity. He got very tired of this fight. It's a very tough do little, but look at that. Accuracy right there, hard body punch. Kipman back with a hard right hand to the jaw. What we talked about earlier, speed and accuracy with punching power and precision right there does a great thing for this sport. It doesn't take as much. You don't have to be as strong, but if you hit with accuracy, you're gonna do a lot of damage. Now, what this guy brings to the table is power. We talked about you don't have to be as accurate, but when you land with power like this, it doesn't matter. Tough as nails, puts on great fights the entire time, willing to take one to give one, but when he lands a punch, it is different. Two big knockouts in the sport of BKSC for a very tough, Mike Jones, but beautiful place punch right there, but it was that power. He has complete belief. If he lands that shot against anybody in this weight class, they're going down, and not only are they going down, the fight is over. Chris, a huge crossroads fight for the two fighters in our main event. That is the theme as well for the two fighters in our co-main. We have Jafar Ford entering 3-0 versus the former champion, Elvin Brito. Total different pass right there. You do have Elvin Brito right here, former champ, as you alluded to. And why was he champ? Look at this awkward style. In and out, throwing combinations from all angles. You can't train for a guy like this. Nobody else trains like that. Nobody else fights like that. You have to figure out on the fly when you're in there how to deal with this. Those punches are coming from such odd angles. And the way he blitzes in, it's hard to time, it's hard to hit. When he's able to get in and out, land those combinations, and keep you on your back foot, he's very difficult to beat. That's why he won the title. That's why he's so difficult to fight. When he gets in there and lands in that range, you're, you're gonna have a tough night. Now, what Ford's been able to do shows that athleticism. He's so fast, he's so explosive, so accurate. But it's that closing the distance. One former football player, and it shows. He pushes off that back foot, gets in the range, and lands powerful shots. When he's able to do that, he's knocked you out every time. Undefeated three knockouts. This is a fight between that odd style of Brito versus the athleticism of Ford. Only fans brings you our tale of the tape for this, our co-main event of the evening. In the welterweight division, Jafar Fort versus Elvin Brito. Four inch height advantage, four inch reach advantage for Fort. He's gonna need that because Brito comes in with those awkward entries and exits. Fort's gotta dictate the pace, the range, and control the fight if he wants to win. Elvin Brito set for fight number 10 in BKFC in January 2022. Brito defeated Caleb Harris by split decision to become the inaugural BKFC welterweight champion. Brito has had 18 pro MMA bouts, additionally one in pro boxing. In our fighter meeting, Elvin Brito told us that he is fully focused on now being a pressure fighter. He said, I absolutely will not circle unless I have to and everything else is going wrong. I want to be on the front foot, use angles, use pivots, but I have to be offensive, not defensive. I love what he said. That's just being a smart fighter. Said he lost a few fights after being the title holder, and you go back and figure out why. He said he was doing a great job certainly not getting hit, but he wasn't putting enough pressure on. He's corrected that. He's elusive. He's hard to hit in there. Why not get into the pocket and land punches from odd angles? Bring 
them out. It's hard to yell when the bat rails in your mouth. Bring them out, bring them out. Hey. Jafar Fort. 3-0 and oh in BKFC, his most recent victory this past July. He defeated Aaron Sutterfield by first round TKO. Ford has also had three pro MMA bouts. Ford told us in our fighter meeting he's going to utilize his jab more than he has in his three previous BKFC fights. And Ford said, I will change levels off of my jab, keep hitting angles, and then landing power shots off of the jab. Has to utilize that athleticism, the beat of the pull into the punch. Said he has to close that distance, and he wants to make Brito fight the entire time. Seems like Brito controls the pace, fights when he wants to. If he pushes the pace the entire time, he will wear him out. He has to control when and where the fight happens. Ford said, no disrespect to Elvin Brito, but I think he wants to turn this into a point fight. I have to make this a bare knuckle fight. I have to control the pace. I think Brito is going to try to leap in, leap out. My timing has to be on point when he leaps in. And throw that straight left. Feels like he has way more power than his opponent. All he has to do is land a good shot. He's been 3 0 with three knockouts. He has belief in his power. He wants to showcase that tonight. This is absolutely huge for both men. The undefeated Jafar Fort, the former champion, Elvin Brito. Wants to get that title run going right now. Brito wants to get back to that title. This is a fantastic matchup. We send it to Jeff Houston. We are now set for the coming event. Scheduled for five two-minute rounds in the welterweight division. Presented to you by OnlyFans. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the red corner. Tonight he wears black trimmed in purple and gold. He stands five feet seven inches tall. His official weight, 165.4 pounds. His BKFC veterans record stands at five victories opposite four defeats. He is the former BKFC World Welterweight Champion, fighting out of Manavo, Puerto Rico. Here is El Bandido, Elvin Leon. Across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight, he wears black and gray. He stands 5 feet 11 inches tall. His official weight, 165.6 pounds. He is undefeated in the squared circle at 3 and 0. Oh, fighting out of Clearwater, Florida, by way of Stanford, Connecticut. Here is the And our referee in charge of the action, Chris Young. Elvin Brito said, my approach to this fight is simple. Punch more and move less. <laughs> Round number one. Rocking great trunks for Jafar Fort. Rocking multicolored trunks for Elvin Brito. The jab, three right hands, and sequence coming forward is Brito. That's that awkward style I talked about. Very difficult to deal with if you're not used to it, and nobody can be. There's the left hand from Brito. What's on the level change? On the pull. I can already see what Ford might need to focus on is that left uppercut. Step in one hand. Big shot from Brito. Look at that emotion being displayed right there from Brito. He was really, he was really wanting to come in and put on a show. Man, an explosion of punches in the fight and an explosion of emotion post fight. Hurt him with that right hand and did exactly what he needed to do. Continue to throw punches and 
until the referee stopped it. Ford needed to take a knee right there. Get your standing, or get your eight. That's just experience that he did not have. He's not used to being hurt. And you can still hear Elvin yelling right there, pleading his case why he deserved a title fight. Victory number six in BKFC for Elvin Brito. And Chris, that was his most dominant victory. A different style. Usually he wants to go out there and control the pace, show you why he's great because he can hit and not get hit. That was not the case in this fight. He came right out. He did exactly what he said he was going to do. He was going to come out there and put on a show, push the pace, hit. He's got to win by knockout. He said he didn't feel like he could win a decision. But whatever he was going to do, that worked perfectly. He was, if he keeps fighting like that, I cannot wait to see it. Here is Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, our referee in charge, Chris Young, steps in and calls a stop to this fight at 40 seconds into round number one. For your winner, by TKO, El Bandido, Elvin Leon Brito. All right. Standing by here with El Bandito, Elvin Brito, congratulations. That was, as Sean and Chris said, your most dominant victory. You were a man possessed. You're very emotional right now. You took three losses in a row, Elvin, and you came out here and you absolutely decimated your opponent. What is going through your mind right now? Listen, yeah, I'm tired of getting played by people who don't know what the fuck they're looking at. So guess what? I'm gonna knock your ass out. No fucking problem. Got your ass. Come give me, give me trout. I'm the champ. You're not the champ unless you beat me. I'm the best. I'm the top of the mountain. Come, give them to me. It don't matter. Everybody knows you can't beat me. Ain't nobody beat me. Give them to me. Fuck you. Ladies and gentlemen, one more time for Elvin Brito. And look at that emotion right there. But man, what a dominant performance. The best he's looked so far. Entering this fight, Jafar Fort had been dominant. But he was dominated in one-way traffic fashion by Elvin Brito. Relentless on the inside. The volume, the precision, the power. In our co-main event of the evening, the winner by way of first-round TKO, Elvin Brito defeats Jafar Fort. Who owns Combat Sports now? The king of violence! Live from the OCC Roadhouse here in Clearwater. BKFC Fight Night brought to you by Bucked Up, Fubo TV, Rasha, and Savage Sip Coffee Company. And now your main event, Tell the Tape, brought to you by Bucked Up. In the light heavyweight division, Mike Richmond versus Eric Lozano. And as you can see here, Lozano does have a four inch height advantage. However, only a half inch reach advantage in this situation. Very similar on all other aspects.
This is fight number five in BKFC for Eric Lozano. He's also had 37 pro MMA bouts. Lozano told us in our fighter meeting, he has never been more confident in BKFC, and that's because he feels he has never had better cardio in his BKFC career. Feels like he knows his opponent's gonna come out fast. He has to weather that storm and then capitalize once he wears his opponent down, slows him down, makes it an even fight. Eric Lozano said of his opponent in our main event, Mike Richmond, he has power, but Lozano said, I definitely have bigger power. Richmond will throw hard to the body, but that will open him up and I will throw harder to his head. Lozano feels like he's never been hit with a body shot. Feels like he's not worried about that at all. Wants to get out there, wait for the right time to counter. Feels like he will dunk and throw that right hook. Mike Richmond, the former BKFC interim light heavyweight champion. This is bout number seven for Richmond in BKFC. Overall, bout number nine in the sport of bare knuckle fighting. Through his eight previous BK fights, Richmond has never gone past three rounds. He's also at 26 pro MMA bouts. And he's 2-0 and in pro boxing. Richmond told us in our fighter meeting, I am focused on my quality of punches, not my quantity of punches. He's also focused on his defense. He knows how good his offense is. If he can deal with not getting hit, it's really going to pay dividends. Wants to frustrate his opponent with that defense. Open up to the body and then throw that straight left right down the pipe. Richmond said, I have to establish my power punches early. I need to move Eric Lozano backwards, and then I will frustrate him with my parries and my clean counters. Use those angles. Use the footwork. Work in position to land that straight. Knows that's going to be his money punch. If he can land that, he will get a knockout. Eric Lozano said, I know the early onslaught is coming. I can't sit back and cover. I have to step forward when Richmond steps forward. Here we go with Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now set for the main event. Scheduled for five two-minute rounds, in the light heavyweight division, presented to you by Bucked Up Energy Dray. Get Bucked Up. Sanctioned by the Florida State Boxing Commission, Assistant Executive Director Timothy Shipman. The three judges scoring our main event, Rodolfo Aguilar, Efren LeBron, Alexander Levin. And the third man inside the squared circle, our referee in charge of the action at the bell, Andrew Glenn. And now, with our bare knuckle fans watching live worldwide on the BKFC app and Fubo TV from the sold out OCC Roadhouse. Fight fans of Clearwater. It's time to. Introducing you first, fighting out of the red corner. Tonight he wears black and white. He stands five feet, 11 inches tall. His official weight, 186.6 pounds. His BKFC record stands at three victories opposite two defeats. Fighting out of Ed Couch, Elsa, Texas. Here is Eric El Travieso Lozano. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight, he wears tiger print and gold. He stands five feet, nine inches tall. His official weight, 185.2 pounds. 
His overall bare knuckle fighting record stands at five victories opposite two defeats with one no contest. He is the former interim BKFC World Light Heavyweight Champion. And after nine long months, he is back! Fighting out of Rosemount, Minnesota, here is Mike the Mike Richmond told us, I have to be aware of Eric Lozano's hard right hand, but I also know that Lozano can become overly reliant on that hard right hand. We've lent on both fighters toe the line, both men up to scratch, round number one. Tiger print trunks for Mike Richmond, black trunks for Eric Lozano. Wide open striking guard, open chest for Lozano, gives that step in right hand. Richmond, more of a bladed stance coming forward. Lozano looking for the entry, couldn't find it. Right hand, counter left hand from Richmond. And that's what Richmond does well, counters accurate, speed, lands hard shots. Lozano, you see the hand fighting? Duck under on the left hook. Here's the jab right hand. The fighters have massive power at 185 pounds. Counter left hand on the right hand from Richmond. And it's just that accuracy, that quick hands of Richmond. He fights like a little guy, but he's a big, strong guy now. Lozano, you see he is cut under his left eye. Step in left hand, low right uppercut lands from Rosado. There's a long jab again from Richmond. Jeff from Lozano off the mark, but the two landed there from Eric Lozano. Yeah. Coming forward, there's the left hand counter, right hand, and now a smear of blood across the face of Mike Richmond. He's cut, bridge of his nose. Five seconds remaining, right the way. Richmond staying measured off of the knockdown to the body on the left hook. Big up from Richmond on the right jab. Lozano staying on his back foot now, coming forward off the right hand. Double right hand from Lozano, the right hand, the bell. That ends round number one. Those accurate hands from Mike Richmond are so difficult to deal with. We talk about it many times. So and it's not necessarily how hard you hit, it's where you hit and when you hit. When a guy doesn't see a punch coming, does so much damage. That was what opened up the cut on Lozano's face. face. See, as Lozano threw that jab, he didn't see the punch coming. But that's what it takes for Richmond, just throwing hard, accurate punches. That placement is so good. And that's a nasty cut. Luckily, it's underneath the eye. Take it out, take it out. Let, let. Presumably a 10 8 round across the board from the three Florida judges for Mike Richmond reporting that knockdown with the straight left hand in round one. Richmond knows he has to be careful in this fight. Medical timeout called by referee Andrew Glenn. Here's the chief medical officer, BKMC, Dr. Don Rucci. The clearance from Dr. Rucci. Now set for round number two. Once again, that placement under the eyes what made this fight go on. We need head movement to start the second round from Lozano. Forward pressure from Richmond. Left to the body. Long jab from Ortho for Lozano. Lozano, his mouthpiece keeps the keep chewing on. He's got to be careful. The left hand again, and the right hand, and then the right hand counter right to the body from Lozano. Step in for Lozano, nearly took himself fully off balance on the reset. Hook to the body, and then the left hand to the head. 
from Richmond. That was clever. 80 seconds remaining around number two. Step in right hand from Lozano. Chris, both fighters stepping in with massive power. Richmond from South Park. Lozano from the Warsaw. Lozano is tough. You have to hit him when he doesn't see the punch coming. You want to do damage. Shovel uppercut, left hand, conventional uppercut. Bang, right hand out from Lozano. Good pull from Richmond. Richmond coming forward, a huge extra right hand of Lozano. Straight left from Richmond, left hook. Good left hand. Down the right. Flush from Richmond. And then it's suddenly swinging back and forth between Richmond and Lozano here in round number two. Both fighters having their moments in the second round. There was a moment there on the right hand from Lozano. Moment right back, left, and that was big to the body from Richmond. And Lozano talked about not being able to get hurt to the body, but he was right there. Put the right hand from Richmond. 15 seconds remaining round two. Big exhale from Eric Lozano. Big left hand from Mike Richmond. Richmond coming forward ever so subtly. Now resets in the center circle. Coming forward with the right hand, Lozano can ah. find it. Next stop, round three. So if there was ever any question about Richmond's chin after taking a couple of bad knockouts, I think those questions have got to be answered right there. He's taking some massive shots, and it hasn't seemed to bother him at all. And I love the way Richmond still continues to go to the body. That was the cut. You can see the blood start to trickle after that right hand from Lozano. And here at the end, I talked about a second ago, if you worry about the chin of Richmond, you're not paying any attention because he's taking some tough shots from a very heavy-handed fighter in Lozano. Set for round number three. Indicated as such by referee Andrew Glenn to both fighters. Up he's checked to both men. Uh, Richmond and Lozano off this scratch. Forward off his scratch to start round three, Mike Richmond. Kind of putting himself on his back foot, loading up that right hand. Let's see if Richmond wants to go back to that body. Right from Richmond, right hand again from Mike Richmond. Lozano straight right to the body, left hand from the sequence there from Lozano. Richmond doubling up his jab, there's the right hand. Kind of left to the body. Richmond on the parry, left hand. Full pressure again from Mike Richmond. Duck under. 20 remaining round three. Right hand, right uppercut. Heavy pressure down the left hand, getting through from Lozano. Left and the right hand to that from Richmond. Left jab right back. Right hand from Lozano, bouncing the step of Richmond as he resets. Now comes forward, left hook to the body. Right to the head from Lozano, just stopped for Mark. from Richmond after Lozano landed flush. Lozano on the jab right hand. The exhale now from Mike Richmond. Richmond does a great job of just getting out of the way of punches just by inches. Richmond again trying to explode forward. 25 seconds remaining round three. The third of what is that? A push, a slip. We fought on in round three. Good refereeing, decisive from Andrew Glenn. No complaint from other men. Big left to the body. There's Mike Richmond. Left hook. It's been forward again. Closing seconds, round three. Lozano sitting back on the right hand. Richmond with the right hand. We move to round four. Mike Richmond is so accurate with those body shots. Those are so devastating. You can tell that last one did some damage to Lozano, but man, Lozano is tough as nails. He's getting hit with a lot of hard shots. He's delivering his own share of hard shots. This is a fantastic fight right here. That body work to Richmond 
does so devastating. Let's see if he can land some of those body punches earlier in this round and really slow Lozano down. Right, so it doesn't look like hitting Lozano to the head is going to do much unless you catch him off guard when he doesn't see it like that first knockdown. That was just when Lozano was throwing a punch. He didn't see that, that counter left hand come in. We are sold out tonight in Clearwater, Florida. Round number four of our main event, right? Heavyweights Mike Richmond versus Eric Lozano. Round four underway. Lozano circling out. The jab left to the body. Duck under. Step away, Jack from Lozano. Lozano trying to explode in, couldn't find it. That'd be faint now on the entry from Lozano. Richmond coming forward. That'd be front shoulder for Mike Richmond from the southpaw stance. 15 remaining on four. Lozano still just trying to land that big, powerful right hand. Trying to do so off the one, calling out the jab, measuring the jab, but there's the left hand to the head from Richmond. Left hand again from Mike Richmond. Left to the body. And that's what Richmond needs to do. These punches to the head just aren't affecting Lozano. Go to the body. Big swing, big miss on the pull from Richmond. But fighters have not only landed big shots, but fighters have walked through some massive shots. Yeah, they've taken tough shots. They're landing beautiful fight. Just like that on cue, Chris. The right hand from Richmond was on walking through that. 25 seconds remaining round four. Was on trying to time that naked right hand to the body. There's a lead right jab. He's been timed that well. The jab of Lozano. Lozano on the jab again, not getting through. We move to the fifth and final round. Sean, I'm not gonna lie to you. This is one of those fights I didn't think there was much chance of it going the full distance. We are coming up to the fifth and final round. A little surprised by that, because you guys, you can see why though. They throw and land hard. But look, landed a hard right hand, Lozano just walks through it. What you think about the three Florida judges scorecards? Go back to round number one. Richmond dropping Lozano with the clean, straight left hand. That right now stands as the lone knockdown in this fight. Are you ready? I stand! Lozano has got to find a way to land that right hand. Got to work in the back pocket. Double up on the jab. He's came just inches away from landing that, but the way Richmond sees punches coming and evades it just enough, he's doing a masterful job of not getting that big punch. Canada, but still sporting a respectful touch of hands as we start the fifth and final round, and there's a right to the head from Mike Richmond. Right hand again to the head from Richmond. There's the left getting through. Not many guys can stay in the pocket right in front of a heavy hitter like this and counter the way Richmond's doing right now. Very dangerous. Zona trying to find the one, two. Left hand, there's the right hand. Lozano walks through that punch, but now takes the backward step. Right hand from Richmond, left to the body. Richmond coming forward. Big body shots from Richmond. Lozano trying to carry to the head. Left hand, and now drops out of Lozano for the second time in this fight. Exhaustion right there from Lozano. 
He got up, it was just a little bit too late. Both guys had moments in that fight. That was an amazing, as a, as a main event, that's exactly what you want to see. Full credit to Eric Lozano in defeat. He most definitely had his moments. And full credit to Mike Richmond, the former BKFC interim light heavyweight titleist. A brilliant victory against an ultra tough and ultra hard hitter, Eric Lozano. Mike Richmond was on point offensively and defensively. Now nine bare knuckle fights for Mike Richmond. He has still never gone the distance. John, you're not going to have an easy night against Lozano. He's going to be there from the beginning to the end. That was a fantastic fight for both these guys. I think Richmond learned a lot in that fight. He, like you said, he doesn't normally make it to the fifth round. I didn't think the fight would make it to the fifth round myself, but I mean, credit to Richmond. It's hard to get a knockout in the later rounds. You get tired. You don't have the power. You don't have the reaction time as you did early. But he came through with the fifth and final round and got the knockout. A beautiful counter left hand. Landed so many tough shots. He had to wait for Lozano to throw a punch and miss. That way he didn't see that punch coming. I said, I think the only way he hurt Lozano is when he doesn't see that punch coming. Here Lozano comes with that right hand. Misses. Boom. We go to Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, before we go to the decision, let's have a round of applause for these two warriors. <laughs> Our referee in charge of the action, Andrew Glenn, steps in and calls a stop to this fight at 53 seconds into round number five. For your winner, by TKO, Mike the Marine. All right, Mike. First things first. Welcome back, my friend. Welcome back to the BKFC. Mike, listen. Talk about this decision. That fight right there was a statement that said the Marine is back. But let me ask you this. Talk about this decision to come back. It was 10 months ago you decided to step away, and here you are. Talk about that decision. You know, it was uh, a lot of things went through my mind when I said I wanted to retire, but I knew I still got a lot left in me. So that's kind of what drew me back. I wasn't ready to walk away and say goodbye yet. So that's why I'm here. So listen, you, you took on a guy that has knocked folks out cold. You took a lot of shots in this fight. If there was any sort of doubts about your chin, if you could take a punch, we found out tonight that you very much can still take a punch. How do you feel after that fight, taking the shots from Eric Lozano? How are you feeling now? No, I feel great. Eric Lozano is a beast. He's a monster. And I knew it was going to be a challenging fight. I didn't realize we were going to be in the small phone booth ring until like a week of. And uh, I know I can hit hard. I, I know there's probably people out there after I got knocked out by Lorenzo, TKO lost Mundell. It was very important that I can show I'm still a dog. I feel good and healthy again. Now listen, as soon as this fight was over, you jumped out of the ring and you went to your girl. What did you say to her? What was that? I just said, I love you and I'm back, baby. She don't want me to do this no more, but we got a couple more to go. I'm so glad you're back, ladies and gentlemen. Let's hear it for Mike the Marine Richmond. So good to see Mike Richmond back where he belongs. He can just
incredible. What a night. So many great fans here, new fans of the sport, and they saw just an unforgettable experience. They saw in that co-main and that main just insanity. You saw Elvin Brito get himself back to prominence, and you saw Mike Richmond with that great return. But, folks, let's talk Knuckle Mania. Can we talk a little Knuckle Mania right now? April 27th, Peacock Theater, Los Angeles, California. It doesn't get much bigger than this, folk. It's Mike Perry. It's Tiago Alves. It's Lorenzo Hunt. And it's Mick Terrell for the heavyweight championship. And it is a clash of the Titans. Ben Rothwell, Todd Duffy, and so much more. A fully stacked card. The biggest and best card of BKFC history. And we heard from David Feldman that we are going to make the biggest announcement in company history in the next two weeks. So please stay tuned. You know he likes to drop all this news. And make sure you tune in, of course, to the Bare Knuckle Show, because it might be there as well. There's the whole week of Knuckle Mania. Scan the QR code, but let's talk about what's after Knuckle Mania for. Let's talk about going to Mohegan Sun May 11. Queen of Violence in the main event. Heather Hardy, Christine Faria. Then we are back in the Midwest. That is May 17th in Omaha. Trinidad Snake taking on Dustin Peck. Insane. And then... Mexico we go. It's been a while since we've been in Mexico. BKFC Fight Night. Puebla, Mexico just got announced. That's going to be a lot of fun on May 25th. And then back to the mountains, back to the Rockies. It's Denver for the BKFC Prospect Series. A lot to be excited about. But, of course, the road to knuckle mania is almost over. Less than two weeks away. Big thanks to everybody here in Clearwater, Florida, and everybody tuning in. For Sean Wheelock, for Chris Lytle, for Jeff Houston and Brian Sosha, I'm Cyrus Bees, and we will see you April 27th for Knuckle Mania 4.